was late for work because I stayed up watching this debate. Pivo. Now that is a f***ing Pivo moment. And, and Which I, think I, is... I think that's, it's a bad thing. It definitely is a bad thing. But at the same time, I also think it's a bad thing for a bunch of people to just go camp out at the university for, you know, multiple days at a time. I, and I, I think that's not unreasonable. I, I don't think that I'm being unreasonable with this. But I also I think I that there's a bad nothing. thing. I don't think it's a bad thing because there's yeah, no, no there's no other there's no other. I think you also have to prove it's a bad thing. What is why like what options at that point? Also, let's for... because this is two and a half hours long. I'd like to try and pretend. If you guys don't mind, I do like to cope a little bit. I'd like to pretend like uh, we're gonna finish this video. So let's put it on one point twenty five. For people to to actually make a fuss, kind of, you know what I mean, in the most peaceful ways possible. If you want to talk about it, I'm down. But if not, no big deal. I don't want to derail your stream. If you're trying to move on, oh, DS, I would love to talk to you. Yeah, that'd be great. Do you want to turn on your camera? Oh, fuck. Bro, I'm in bed. Uh, is my mic good? If it's not, I can get back on my computer. Yeah, your microphone's fine. Okay, okay. Yeah, no, I'm I'm chilling, man. Let me see if I can do a Discord bubble or some. Oh, there okay. it is. Okay, cool. Yeah, sorry, I can't really quite see because I'm like not even at my computer right now it's all good. but yeah i didn't i didn't want to derail your stream or anything or no, like no, no, like no, no not at all my stream is a sequence of endless derailments in general so, <laughs> yeah, I so it's fine. yeah i mean like so I, I i see what you're saying kind of with like the guy entering the encampment but i think that it's kind of problematic if people just get into a university and build like an area and tell people they can't go inside that area and also like in the video it's hard for me to know whether they're really stopping him from the encampment because like i mean and, and you know you can look at it from my perspective because you look at that video and it doesn't seem like there's an encampment behind those people yeah they framed it in a way specifically so that it would invoke that response from people that are so someone can correct me if i'm wrong from my understanding all of the protests that I've seen have been in like campus squares. Um, and basically the encampment blocks people from coming inside of the encampment. So if you are an agitator, like you're a Zionist freak, right? You can't just go inside and start talking to a bunch of people and being like, hey, hey, so, so let me guess, you hate Jews? You hate Jews? But from my understanding, you can still go to class if you just want to go to class. If, if you're a student at like, let's say UCLA or Columbia or NYU or whatever, and you, you don't give a shit about this, like your life is hard enough. You work like two jobs and you go to school and you have like medical debt and stuff. You don't have the energy or time. Cause I'm not judging the people who don't go to protest or whatever. Um, you know, you just don't know what someone else's life is like. You don't know what, um, how much privilege or lack of privilege they have. So you're just like some random schmuck. You just want to go to your school. You just want to go to your classes and then go back home because you're exhausted from working. My understanding, no one is being stopped. The worst case scenario is that maybe you have to take a slightly longer path because the square that you usually walk through is being used as an encampment. I don't think they're blocking doors and blocking kids from going to their classes. So, so if anyone has evidence of the contrary, please send it to me because I would love to know if this is true or not. But yeah, I mean, it wouldn't be effective protesting to do that. I feel like it makes sense that they're not doing that. And like you should. I, maybe it's just my opinion, but. um. If the protesters have been so well organized that they even have media liaisons and they make sure not to talk to agitators and they make sure to just say, sorry, we don't talk to agitators. Sorry, we don't, we're not talking to journalists. We're not talking to media. I would assume that they're not being organized by total dipshits, which means that they're probably not doing things that would get them immediate negative press, like blocking kids from being able to go to class. Like, I feel like you can judge a group based on, like, smart or dumb decisions and then assume in the future whether or not they're going to make smart or dumb decisions. For example, Asmongold has one dumb opinion about protesting. Chances are his future opinions about protestings, protesting should also be dumb. If they're smart enough to know not to speak to uh, media and agitators, they're probably smart enough to know that blocking kids from going to classes is not effective.
Jewish students are being hunted down, according to Netanyahu. Yes, this is totally true. This is actually totally true. UCLA access map, purple is path to encampment. Um, okay, just making sure that there was nothing in the photo that, like, I, I couldn't show or whatever. So basically just what, like, these entrances aren't open? And then the encampment is here? Is that right? But from my understanding, it looks like you're still able to access these buildings. You just can't maybe take the easiest path to the building. They tend to stop people who aren't enrolled in the school into the protest area because it's easier for agitators to cause trouble inside of the campus, giving police an excuse to raid. The only building that's not accessible is the library, but that was the uni choosing to shut it down. Um, you do realize that blocking anything on campus is illegal, right? <laughs> no, I didn't know that. Oh my gosh, you should tell me more about that. You're so smart. You're so smart and pretty and handsome and tall. Wow, what else do you know? Wow. Why does that kind of sound like Bimbo Marge? <laughs> Wait, why did that sound like that? Okay, let's go. Familiar. So you think that like basically they uh, they filmed it from a direction where oh, there no, aren't... I, it's not that I think, I know. I was there. Oh, no, you, when did you go there? I went there three days ago, I think. And he was there yeah. actually even that day as well. He's been there every single day. So he's one of these broccoli haired Zoomers that runs around and is like trying to use American foreign policy and active conflict to oh, basically you. make TikTok clout for himself. He's also worked with groups like Stand With Us, which is a group that directly gets funding from the Israeli government. So like he has worked with the Israeli government to do propaganda already, but I'm sure this is a great career opportunity for him. That's why he's been on Fox News. There's videos of him like trying to debate and agitate teachers uh, that are near the encampment. Even Sky News called him a counter protester and an agitator. Like, he's like a known figure. This is not a random guy. That's also the reason why he is, mm -hmm. at least for UCLA campus, he's the- It's like when you watch uh, Jubilee videos and they're like, here we have people on the left and here we have people on the right. But they're all open to discussion. And like two of the people on the right are like media literate, have their own shows dedicated to grifting and misreporting stories on purpose. It's like- this is not a discussion between some people on the left and some people on the right. This is a discussion between some people on the left and people who are getting paid to grift. Like, can we be realistic for two seconds? Only video of like anyone even claiming the students are blocking people from going to campus because he's deliberately I'm going up to the encampment in an effort to try to get into the encampment to start fights. When I was there, a bunch of Zionist counter protesters tried to do that as well. And the students were incredibly well organized, incredibly well organized. And they just set up a human chain to like, they don't even like physically apprehend or remove people. They basically just body block them as though they are there, you know, having a picnic. Oh yeah, no, I saw that. And I think it was like, I think two nights ago, not last night, whenever all this stuff got removed, but the night before. I mean, it was pretty obvious that like the Israeli or like Zionist- Also, let's just be honest, the type of people who support Israel don't walk through the areas where people are being social anyways. Yeah. Yeah. Or anti-Palestinian ones were the aggressors. And I think that that's a bad thing. I mean, I, I don't think that the guy is in the wrong, though, for being a counter protester or even for being an agitator. Really, it depends on how you define the word, because that's his freedom of speech. And I feel like that's what's fair in the same way that it's fair for. The oh, my. Oh, my God. I'm going to lose my marbles. They're all gone. I've lost all of them. <laughs> I've lost every single marvel. Those other people to go and protest for Palestine. Yeah, but the difference I, is, I, I, yeah, the difference ahead. is, first of all, bear mace or mace in general is illegal yeah. to bring to protest, and he's like flashing it. There's another video of the students. Literally, he walks up to them. Like they're... you can't say, people literally getting permits to block bridges using their uh, um, uh, constitutional rights to protest. It's bad, but agitating is fine because it's free speech. 
<laughs> like, what is wh where is the consistency here? Where is the consistency in this logic? Like, can we please? We're gearing up for the cops to show up. Yeah. And they just gonna say we are peaceful. We're peacefully protesting against the Israeli genocide here. Like, we see your bear mace. Like, please, you're making us feel unsafe. And he actually literally does not have a right to have that on him. And yet, that on that very same night, last night, he was over there mm -hmm. dabbing it up with the cops and shit. The cops obviously don't give a shit about the pro-Palestinian encampment, especially because two nights prior, at this point, when the counter-protesters actually entered the, or tried to enter the encampment, they came with weapons, they came with fireworks, they came with skunk spray, they came with bear exactly. mace. Um, that was like the day that, because um, they were chanting the where were you? Was this the, the where were you moment? I don't know what the, what do you mean, where were you? Oh, moment? oh, yeah, I guess you were sleeping. Like last night, whenever it happened, like a lot of the protesters were like chanting at the cops. Oh, and they yeah. were saying, like, where were you? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so like we're talking about the same thing, right? So that so the night prior, the reason why they were chanting, where were yeah. you last night to the cops is probably because the night prior, uh, Zionist counter protesters actually stormed the camp and beat the shit out of some of the Palestinian students, like, or pro Palestinian students with like uh, wood pallets. Wait, wait, wait. I watched it happen. I watched it happen live. It was disgusting. Like, I, I was kind of disappointed that the police didn't arrest any of them. Yeah. The, the police, police came. Really the police actually they came. Stopped. They did. <laughs> Yeah, and they stood by for an hour and 30 minutes in single file line formation while yeah. these guys were beating the shit out of, and these guys aren't even students. Like, you can see it in the video. They're like, these guys are like adults. They're older. You know what I mean? They're well, like older fair, than students. There's also, there's also the protesters that are Palestinians that were identified as being older as well. Yeah, so yeah. It's, no, it's hard I, to I know I'm saying. And, yeah. No, no, I'm saying that like a lot of these guys, especially the more violent ones, have already yeah. been like identified as not going to UCLA. And they're oh, basically yeah. I mean, return I customers. So. And they, they're basically return customers at this point. It was a big point of contention with the students too. Because yeah. UCLA was like, oh, we're going to, we are going to take administrative action against the counter protesters for being violent. And the students were frustrated with that because they were like, how the f are you going to do anything as an administration? to someone who's not a student because a lot of the counter protesters were not students like there were right. known right-wing figures and stuff like that amongst the counter protesters anyway so the reason why the students were frustrated understandably is because they've demonstrated great messaging discipline so far they are as limited in their disruption as possible and historically speaking campus-wide protests such as this one is infinitely more disruptive than what the palestinian uh the pro-palestinian encampment looked like i mean we're talking in 1968 they were taking fucking literally uh students would go in during the civil rights movement with guns and take deans hostage in 1968 oh, yeah, in Colombia, they took a Dean hostage for like days. Yeah, yeah, I know about that. Yeah, they would like, they would literally just like shut off access for any, for a Dean from like leaving their room. They'd be like, no, you're not leaving. So historically speaking, people on the right side of history that we understand were on the right side of history have taken way more radical and way more disruptive approaches to protest. So all things considered, both in the Columbia University, uh, where they overtook Hamilton Hall again, just like they had done time and time again at Columbia specifically, that hall has a... I mean, you kind of don't really need a better example than just like comparing um, what is currently happening to Palestinians in the Gaza Strip um, and like how we view them. I'm not saying that it's the same and I'm not saying it's the same level of destruction or anything like that. I'm saying that the response to Gazans being slaughtered is the same as the response was to Jewish people being slaughtered. It's like, there's no, the, the people being oppressed can only peacefully, in the most peaceful way, resist. And if that doesn't work, I guess they just have to, I guess they just have to die, I guess. Yeah, yeah, that's just how it has to be. It's like, do you not realize that you, this is not, you don't, you're admitting that you would have been someone against the civil rights movement. That's what you're doing right now by saying the shit that you're saying about protesters at campuses. Um, Baron, thank you, by the way, so much for the 10 gift subs. Thank you. And for the tier one. Thank you. That's really nice of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and also, uh, Ray, thank you so much for the tier one. Thank you guys. Thank you. Historical significance for student protesters. And also, especially at UCLA, where the encampment was like not even remotely disruptive, simply just uh, taking on this massive lawn space where there's a lot of demonstrations usually. Sorry, really quickly, Asman would say that Palestinians can only protest peacefully. They did that in the March to Return in 2018 and the IDF sniped them. He probably doesn't even know about the March to Return in 2018, or he probably found out about it last week. Like, I'm not trying to articulate this, but like in a lot of places, you have to file for a permit to protest. If they can deny that, do you really have the right? I mean, yeah. 
just because the state doesn't think that people have the right to protest for something, it doesn't mean that you don't have the, like the state does not have the final say on what is and what isn't, what is right and what is wrong. You should get a permit because it's good for optics. But if they don't, if there's no permit, it's like, what, what we would just wait for Rosa Parks to get a permit to sit in the front. Like sometimes the law is really dumb and you should break the law, but that's not official legal advice and you should speak to your lawyer. Okay. I would say if you're protesting something like slavery or genocide, maybe breaking the law by peacefully protesting in an area where you didn't have a permit is fine, actually. <laughs> actually. Maybe if the legal system is bad, you should fight against it. <laughs> like, it, this is, it's, it's very simple. People on, like, Asmund's side love to pretend like, oh, you guys are, are so hypocritical. I bet if I started a protest illegally, you wouldn't like it. And it's like, well, I guess it depends. What are you protesting for? Um, I'm protesting that... Um, I should stop getting judged for having a moldy apartment. Okay, well, that's a really dumb reason to protest. <laughs> yeah. I do think you should get off the road, actually. <laughs> I think you should go, get off the road and go clean your fucking apartment. Like, I don't know how to tell you this. Oh, you're protesting for civil rights? Fucking protest away, man. Yeah. More power to you. Like, fuck. That's a really good reason to protest. Like, it's very simple. It's very, very, very simple. Not only that, but the state can choose what laws to follow. Look at Arizona and the um, AG deciding not to pursue people that get abortions recently. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's how mold goes away, Denims. Well. Maybe that's how some people do. Okay. I don't know what to tell you. Okay. Well, listen. Um, and, and building a, uh, like, you know, putting tents around it and trying to protect the tents from... Uh, people coming in and and fucking it up. There are yeah, videos yeah. of there are videos of counter protesters breaking into the encampment in spite of the the human wall, the human shield, yeah. the human chain that they create. And as soon as they get in, they start fucking throwing hooks, throwing bows, stealing people's fucking tents, trying to like shit on, like trying to break the tents apart and stuff. But that's the reason why they don't want to let in random people to protect the stupid. Also, um, my arm is being blocked by my cat. But correct me if I'm wrong. Assault and battery. Um, assault is, is, or can be defined as like an attempt to harm. Let me see. And battery is the actual harming. Yes. Legal definition. An attempt or threat. The threat of harm, the definition, the legal definition of assault is an intentional act that gives another person reasonable fear that they will be physically harmed or offensively touched. No physical contact or injury actually has to occur, but the accused person must have intentionally acted in a way to cause that fear. So like, like if you use a bat, battery, I think is when you use a blunt object to assault. I think batteries like continued assault. Assault is just the threat of physical violence, if I remember correctly. Yeah. And so, like, here's the thing, right? Um, even if there are videos, this is just, like, media literacy-wise. Um, if there are videos that you ever see online where it looks like one person just got hit for no reason, remember that there's stuff at the beginning of footage <laughs> that gets cut out that is almost certainly probably some action of assault that that person had a reason to believe that they were going to do something, that they were instigating. And it might not look like it from how it's deceptively clipped, but it's possible that that was totally in self-defense and totally valid under the law. A very good example is like the instance of Steven Crowder getting punched by those union guys. Like he was in their face, like getting in their faces and arguing with them, like, if those people had a good enough lawyer, they could probably argue that that was, like, defensively. Like, this was assault.
For example, the bear mace guy flashing the mace to the protesters. Yeah, that's a great example. That is a really, really, really good example. Like if you show everyone that you have mace and you're like, I'm going to use this. It's like as far as everyone else is concerned, you have made an official threat. If they attack you, uh, 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 like pulling a gun. Yes, it was literally defensive. Steven pushed one of them down, but that part was cut out from the videos that circulated. He literally shoved the guy who pushed, or sorry, he shoved the one that punched him, which was why the union guy wasn't charged. Yes, yes. Um, but anyways. It's because they know the university won't do that. As demonstrated by oh, the fact yeah, that they well, didn't do that when the counter protesters came and the cops literally stood idly by. I do think that, like, whenever I watched it live, uh, there was, like, crazy fucking violence. And then once the cops showed up, even whenever they were in that line, the violence went down by, like, 95%. But I think that you're totally right that the counter the counter protesters were, like, the agitators. They 100% were, and they were being violent. And to me, it was disappointing that I think the police didn't arrest more of them. Because it was pretty obvious that the pro-Palestinian ones were the ones that were the victims in that situation. Yeah, but they ended up um, arresting only the Palestinian, like the pro-Palestinian side. And the night prior, the night prior, they didn't actually, they didn't actually engage with the counter-protesters uh, yeah. until, you know, uh, until they were setting off fireworks and launching them directly in the encampment. So the question is, you know, why are they picking a side? Because they've arrested hundreds of students, both at Columbia the University, both in CCNY. What's up? You mean, why are the police picking a side? Oh. The police are picking a side, and it's not the side that is the violent side in this situation. It's the side that's peacefully demonstrating, in, a, mm -hmm. in, in my opinion, a direct violation of First Amendment rights. Um, I don't well, even personally believe that protesters are supposed to, like, protests are going to be disruptive. Some of those protest movements uh, you might not agree with or the taxes you might not agree with. But ultimately, the way I look at it is um, they, they were the perfect victims in this situation, even though I don't expect them to be perfect victims. And yet, e even after all of that, they were still met with violent suppression uh, violent free speech suppression from the state i don't know if it's really free speech suppression right because they're not really getting arrested for protesting they're getting arrested for putting a bunch of tents on the campus whenever the campus tells them to leave yeah i mean the police nobody nobody ever, ever nobody ever gets arrested for protesting that's just um that's not a thing everybody well, always definitely. everybody always when states like in like in russia or in china or whatever when people are like getting arrested for protesting the state of course makes up like another reason for it uh, there as well they'll be like oh trespassing you know what i mean what, obstructing what do you think that's unreasonable um do i think that arresting someone for protesting peacefully is unreasonable yes well do i think that i mean i, I think a better question is that if you own a property like should you have the autonomy to decide who's on that property well in this circumstance is literally public property because it's ucla ucla is a public school too so that that ultimately uh that ultimately changes the dynamic a lot it depends on what the property is though there's like private property yeah. like someone's house right I don't think that people should come to your house and protest it at your house. Uh, like that's a, it's very different, like disrupting your life um, and, and violating your privacy and safety but versus I'm protest. Say, I'm just going to say the people showing up at Bibi Netanyahu's door and protesting outside his house are based as shit. Yeah, I'll fucking say it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll fucking say it, dude. Fuck those, fuck that guy. That guy's a piece of shit. Like, <laughs> actually, I know this is crazy, but uh, Bibi Netanyahu is a murderer and a war criminal, and I think his life should be disrupted. That's right. Some average Joe Schmo, yeah, that's, you're just being a piece of shit. You're just being an asshole. A literal war criminal? This is like something that like right-wingers, they just can't wrap their brain around the concept that like disrupting the life of a piece of shit of a literal war criminal and murderer is good and doing the same thing to someone who has done nothing is bad this is like this this concept is so hard for their their tiny little brains they're like but but you're being hypocritical it's like it's okay buddy you'll get it you'll get it take your time take your time <laughs> Take your time. There's actually a difference between people who do bad things and people who do good things. Mm -hmm. Yes. In the middle of a public space at the school that you pay tuition to is perfectly valid, in my opinion. Well, everybody else pays tuition, too. I think it's kind of unfair if, for example, yeah. some people that pay tuition are locking other people out 
that are also paying tuition from the same well, services that they're both paying for. So that's a, you bring up a good point, right? Like you're saying this person also pays tuition. He should be able to go to any space he wants to, any place he wants to on campus, which is yeah, correct. I mean, like, I'm Except sure there's a few exceptions, but yeah, generally. Yeah. So obviously there are many exceptions, not just a few, like, you know, UCLA campus is very famous. They, uh, they shot off certain parts of the campus for filming and stuff like that all the time. Um, the difference here is that this is a broad open public space that these students were already occupying. And um, the, the reason why they're not letting like they were from what I've observed, people hop into chat baiting creators with false info, like the video of the guy being stopped from going to class. And then the out of context clip of Denim's bad actors aren't just at protests. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's just the goal is like as a content creator, your job is to be as responsible as you can, right? Like if someone sends a clip, you should never just assume that everything in that clip is like accurate and that there was no other context, right? They weren't disrupting class. They weren't stopping people from going to class. The university, as a matter of fact, is the reason why the other buildings that were in the surrounding area were shut down. I talked to the students when I was there and they stated they wanted to go to the library, for example. It's across the, the, the uh, green area is across the, uh, the way from the library. They shut down the library during midterms so that these guys' lives would be harder, so that they would have a harder time studying. They shut down the Wi-Fi so that uh, students that are on the encampment would not be able to use it. Try to make, you know, make this protest as hard for them as possible, which is normal. I don't think that that's a good thing to do, personally. I think it probably goes against the values that UCLA espouses, specifically ironic because, like, a lot of these campuses literally have, like, super woke terminology in their in their studies. Like, USC literally doesn't have genocide studies. They call it resisting uh, resistance to genocide studies. So oh boy. For me, so for me, it's like, if you're taking that extra initiative to be extra woke on the aesthetic front, you should probably not be surprised when your students learn the actual lessons that you're teaching in these classes, which is that you should resist the genocide, right? So um, the fact that the university turns around uh, after teaching them about uh, many different genocides that have happened all around the world, and then, uh, and then tries to do everything in their power to make it as like annoying for these students as possible is a little hypocritical in my opinion. It is hypocritical, but it's also something that's driven by the protesters' actions. And the protesters are doing that, and the result of them doing that is the university shutting down those places. And also the university, and, and you can correct me if I'm wrong about this, because I'm not really sure exactly. This is just what I've heard. Uh, I thought that about two days ago, the UCLA said that the protest was unlawful. But before then, they were basically kind of like not addressing it or not calling in the police to, to do anything. Is, is that right? No, they actually did call the police, but they called the campus police specifically to protect the encampment. I was actually kind of surprised at the university's actions at that time because they yeah. knew that there were a lot of counter protesters that in comparison to Columbia, for example, which had literally called the police so against like, the encampment. Can I just say this is my biggest problem with um, Asmund Gold. It's like he speaks with such confidence on topics that he knows nothing about. Like, his understanding of the conflict in Palestine is so lacking, but he speaks with confidence that I've never seen before. Ever. And it's, it's very bizarre to me. I, I just assume it's just like, it's what happens when you give like an average white dude a big audience. They just think that they're like the shit and that they're like, capable of talking about anything they want to talk about it's like well i watched south park growing up so i basically know everything i need to know it's like what 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 i feel like you you skipped a couple steps here i think i think maybe 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 you step Beach to see isn't much different. I mean, that's even a, that's a different story. That's a different story. Not sure you've seen it in every cis hat white men. <laughs> Some, I will be brave. Some white men are good, actually. Yeah, I said I said it. I I know. I know. Yes. Mm-hmm. <sighs> yeah. <sighs> <laughs> Wait, there's a chatter that I want to talk to. <laughs> yeah, the white men that are good, they're trans men. <laughs> I'm just kidding. 
Sorry, I have to respond to this chatter. What a weird thing to say, dot, 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 question mark. So there's this thing called context clues. Okay, notice the chat emoting, tech W. Um, it's in, if you maybe you don't have BTTV, it's an emote of a guy laughing. You can see the guy laughing up there. And they're laughing because I was making a joke. Yes. Was it funny? That's up to you to decide. Okay. You can, you can watch the stream and never think I'm funny. That's cool with me. That's fine. I don't care. But, um, but yeah, I hope that helps. I, I hope that helps a little bit. In Columbia University? Yeah, um, I saw that. The UCLA campus actually had sent police to, uh, to line up around with their backs uh, to the encampment. Now, that's not just symbolism. That actually means something, right? When you send oh, cops, white cops. That's a, I mean, if the university is allowing it, then really that's, that's the end result. I mean, they're the ones that make that decision. It just it seems confusing to me that, you know, based off of the logic that, like, they're trying to shut down the, universe, or the library or the, the Wi-Fi, but they're also, like, having police come in and protect them. Uh, it, it seems very confusing. Like, what are their goals here? What are they trying to do? Well, ultimately, their goal is to get the students to shut the fuck up and go away and stop bothering the administration to make these moves about divestment. I don't know if you're familiar with the, with the goals of the student protests. Wait. I support Israel as a Finnish guy. I can't attack a sovereign nation kidnapping 200 people and killing 1,200 people. After that... Some people are protesting for them, how mistreating they are, like, what the fuck? You know, I support Palestine as uh, an American lady. I can't reason with attacking a not-sovereign nation of people and killing 30,000 of them. After that, some people are protesting for them, how mistreating they are, like, what the fuck? How can you reason with a nation that kills 34,000 people? Think about it. Totally agree. Especially when 15,000 of them are children. And every campus is different, but like specifically the UCLA. <laughs> I guess next time they think better before starting a war. Okay, can I just say really quickly, can I just say something really quickly? This might be mean. This might be mean, but I'm allowed to say it because I'm bilingual, okay? I had a friend, all right? When I was really into, I believe it was, uh, was it Maple Story or Vindictus? One of those games, all right? And she was Finnish, okay? And she spoke English perfectly, all right? Let me just say that. Let me just say her English was perfect. Okay. All right. And she told me it's because Finnish education is amazing. So what's your excuse? Huh? Why are you typing like a dipshit in here? What's your, you have some of the best education on the planet. And you can't pay attention in your fucking English class. And like I said, I'm allowed to say this. I'm bilingual. All right. I know two languages. I'm not a dumb American who only knows one. All right. So uh, I guess next time they think better before typing in chat, I guess. I guess next time. I can speak to. Is the divest, yeah. Yeah, is the divest. <laughs> next well. time, why don't you finish your studies? You guys aren't allowed to get mad at me about that one because it was a chatter that took right that one. I stole that joke. So if it wasn't funny, it's because I stole it, okay? And if it was funny, it's because it was mine. Okay. Uh, from uh, UCLA, the UC system <laughs> across the board is a massive endowment. And that endowment basically works like a mutual <laughs> fund, you know, and they're investing in a lot of corporations. And the students want to have financial transparency in what corporations the university endowments are going to, like what, what corporations they're investing in, which is perfectly valid, perfectly reasonable demands to make. As a matter of fact, a lot of companies have, have done this. A lot of people have done this successfully divesting demanding that people divest from oil and gas companies for like environmental activism you know what i mean oh yeah um, it's been going on a lot and yeah. just for the record like i totally support them protesting against that even if i agree or disagree with it it's their right to protest against that the only concern that i have is whenever it shuts down other students ability to learn or get an education or 
for people to use the facilities in the way that they're intended to. Yeah. Whenever you talk, students are currently still able to use the facilities. There's nothing stopping them. Generally, anyone here who's been to university in the U.S., even my like um, the campuses that I went to in New York, um, which are all basically commuter campuses that don't really have, <laughs> you know, miles of grass. <laughs> um, there were multiple entrances to every building, which is not surprising. It's a giant campus. It's a giant building. Like, you, you have to have multiple entrances because it it's, it's like building code. Like, if there's a fire, people need to be able to get out. Not to mention, usually students have, sorry, usually, usually colleges have, like, tens of thousands of students they need an easy way to get in and out. Like they can't just like, oh, I just, I just noticed Mayor Kay. Mayor Kay, are you happy? Are you, are you nice and satisfied where you are? Okay. Also a bit of good news. Uh, breaking Evergreen State College in Olympia, Washington becomes the first university in the U.S. to fully divest from Israel. This was Rachel Corey's school. No fucking way, dude. No fucking way. That's so sick. For anyone who doesn't know, Rachel Corey uh, was an American peace activist. She was killed when Israeli soldiers crushed her with a bulldozer. She was trying to prevent the demolition of a Palestinian family home. Yeah. The actual, like, intent of the protesters, I totally support them. I, yeah. Absolutely. Or, or even the counter-protesters, because that's freedom of speech. I think that, you know, if you don't have that, I mean, you don't have anything. Yeah, as long, so, as, they're not, as, yeah. long as they're not trying to, like, directly agitate, disrupt, and, like, harm the students. Because there's also a yeah. completely separate dynamic here. You hate doxing, right? Like, you, I assume, I of course. We all so, so uh, would it shock you if I were to tell you that there are active organizations that collaborate sometimes with the Israeli government, sometimes independently, that are tasked with doxing students deliberately and even putting their faces on trucks around the campus and uh, and driving those trucks around the campus with their massive fucking uh, billboards, basically saying like this student, their name, and and be like this is an anti semite. Oh yeah, I mean I, I would instantly believe that. I mean absolutely, yeah. and I'm sure that there are people on the other side to do the same thing. It's uh, just there there aren't any there aren't any official organizations. Sorry, it, really quickly, I have to respond to this. Stop being a hypocrite, anyways. You live on Indian land, Indian land. Uh, after a genocide of them, Keck W, a tad too late. Y you know, we know that. We learn it in school, first of all. <laughs> okay. Second of all, I'm for giving them that land back. I want to give them their land back. <laughs> I think if you live on land that belonged to the indigenous people, you should give it to them and the state should be capable. We're the richest country on the planet, okay? We should be able to relocate anyone who lives on stolen land, which is all of it to be clear, but the tribes that remain and the people that remain have specific chunks and swaths of land that belonged to them, that their homes were. Like, we have so much fucking dirt on this stupid country. We can give it to them. Especially because some of their land is like holier than other areas. Um, like uh, the area where the pipeline is in the Dakotas. I forget the name of the pipeline. I'm blanking. The one that uh, uh, Biden renewed the contract for. That is not just any random ass fucking land. The Keystone. Yeah. From my understanding, the Keystone in North Dakota is land that's actually like important to the indigenous people. And the pipeline is literally sullying the water that is theirs or even the like Mount Rushmore. That was a that was not that we like what we did to Mount Rushmore was disgusting like that. I don't give a shit about some fucking random old men carved into a rock. Fuck that. <laughs> that was a spiritual site. We should give it back. That's the least we can do after we fucking genocided them. Jesus. It doesn't have to be the case that we go and kill the people currently there. We can relocate people. We do it all the time when we have to fucking build a freeway. We literally have 
a freeway or sorry, we literally have rules about the government buying people's homes at fair market rate or whatever. It's like, hey, well, we want to build a freeway here. We know your house is here. Here's the amount that we think your house is worth. We're giving it to you, eminent domain, and we're taking this. The U.S. could do that any minute they want to, any minute they want to. And I'm for that. <laughs> I am 100,000 percent for that. Like, I don't know why people love to bring this up and be like, seems hypocritical. It's like, no, I have the same position that I have about the, about Israel and Palestine that I do about the U.S. If the indigenous people feel that certain areas are spiritual sites for them and that certain bits of land are historically spiritual for them, then yeah, they should get it back. There aren't that many indigenous people. We killed a lot of them. So, yeah. In the same way that Canary Mission, in the same way that like, the organization I'm referencing is called Canary Mission. Um, there's a couple other official organizations as well. Uh, some of them are American organizations. They literally directly will be like, oh, are you at a pro-Palestinian protest? You're a fucking anti-Semite. And then they plaster through their faces. They literally try to stop. Well, you got from, that like a week ago, right? Or two yeah, stopantisemitism.org. Call yeah. me an anti-Semite of the week. Yeah, but I mean, that's... Sorry, last thing, last thing. Um, Sam Cedar said it best in reference to uh, people who say, oh, well, you're a hypocrite. If you want people to pay more taxes, why don't you pay more taxes? You need change that's bigger than that that forces the people who wouldn't move to move you actual moron if i left the u.s i don't even know where you're talking about i don't even know you are still there like i don't know what the fuck you're talking about i'm not even talking about removing all americans off i'm saying that indigenous people should be able to say these are spiritual sites can we get these specific spiritual sites back okay <laughs> So I'm not even talking about like mass removal of the American people. Like that doesn't even make any fucking sense. But anyways, moving on. Um, you need bigger change than that, you idiot. <laughs> you need bigger change. You need change that actually forces people. Like that's not hypocritical. I don't know how to explain that point any better that, that there's no other way to do it <laughs> there's that's it if if you wanted to not be hypocritical you would have to stop existing in society and start living at the bottom of the ocean there is not a way to stop being hypocritical in society i don't know how like go like if you want a nice baby show to explain it to you go watch the good place OK, and it'll explain the concept to you as easily as one can. All right. Like literally existence is unethical. <laughs> just living is unethical. Let me guess. Let me guess. Uh, you, just to be clear, you're against uh, um, children working in mines, right? Because it's kind of weird that you have a smartphone that was made with children mining. Wow. So you're very pro-child slavery. Is that right? Have you eaten chocolate ever in your life? What are you, pro, you're, you're pro-child slavery now? Wow. Wow. Let me guess, you're pro-sweatshops too because you own stuff that's in sweatshops, right? Right? Yeah. Yeah. But uh, you can keep pretending like you can actually exist as a totally non-hypocritical person. <laughs> Go ahead. It's okay. What's up? Well, it, it's it's ridiculous. It, it's it's absolutely ridiculous. I, I, yeah. I and this is kind of the problem that I, I have, and I think that really, to me, it's pretty obvious that you know being against Israel doesn't mean that you hate Jews, right? Of course. And, and there are plenty of Jews who are against Israel as well, especially absolutely. at those protests. Well, there's even some that are protesting in Israel, as far as I know. Yeah. So, yeah. No, I minor I, minors. Yeah. <laughs> understand that, and uh, I, I, I think that's problematic too. I don't, I don't agree with that either. It's in my opinion, I think it's intimidation. But it's also like a, a misrepresentation. So, yeah, I, I think that's bad in the same way that anybody else. I also don't think that people who are pushing back against these people, like the actual protesters are making the encampments and everything like that. I, I don't think that they're fascists. Like I have people calling me a fascist, for example, which I, th I think is, is really kind of overboard. 
And uh, I, mean, I think I, also I think some of those guys are okay. fascists, for the record. I, I do. Oh, I, oh, oh and, and, and I bet some of the people that are against Israel are anti-Semites. Absolutely. Yeah, but yeah, ultimately, I mean, no, ultimately, uh, no, no, no. I, I don't disagree with you. I think there's like definitely yeah. there's definitely anti-Semitism in the in the pro Palestinian movement as well. But the broader yeah. the you have to look at the broadest uh, defense of the movement, right? right? Like, what does the movement signify? What their overarching goals are? The reason why I have uh, an easier time calling those who defend Israel fascist is because Zionism uh, is predicated on the idea that Israel has to be a Jewish supremacist ethno state that literally has. A, a certain percentage of Jews inside of Israel. This is a demographic concern unlike any other. Here in the United States of America, if we were to say America has to be a nation that is 75%, you know, Irish, like English, or, yeah, and whatever, German, yeah. white, everyone would understandably go, that's fucking insane. <laughs> that's just white supremacy. But yeah. Zionism is that exact same principle, is that exact same concept, but for, uh, for very valid historical reasons, it has been able to shelter itself as a defensive posture, as though it is a defensive ethno state. The valid reasons, it, it, of course, being the Holocaust. And, in the context of like World War II and, yeah. you know, like everything that happened. Yeah. So I, yeah. no, I understand that. And I mean, I'm not really a pro Israel guy, at all, honestly. Uh, I don't really give a shit about them. It's not my fight to fight. It's not my it problem. It is actually. Uh, I mean, listen, well, well, it is. I mean, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. No, I know. We, what do, you're we do spend a shit ton of tax dollars to defend Israel. We gave $26 yeah, billion dollars to Israel blood. just this past week. I mean, <laughs> yeah i think it's a fucking waste of money it's absolutely a waste of money i wouldn't want to support that especially not whenever they're doing things and uh you know like bombing these people over in Gaza <laughs> yeah. and shit. like of course not yeah why would i want why, why would i want to support that yeah no it's, it's, absolutely you know? which is why i think uh the the okay so it's almost like there's a reason they're protesting <laughs> <laughs> See, this is what I mean when I say that it feels like Asmongold just talks about things that he knows nothing about. Like, he has no idea how much money we give to Israel. And he doesn't realize that people are protesting the money that we give to Israel. Like, it feels like he sees something and then makes a decision about it after spending five minutes learning about it. Like, we're not even into Wikipedia territory. It's just like, I read one news article and now I have an opinion. And it's like, dude, some things require just a little bit more reading, a little bit more protest that these students are engaging in is like not only perfectly valid but i think their methods are above and beyond like there is there are rarely ever going to be protests where like you have a hard time finding a single person that doesn't say something wrong or a single oh, yeah. person that doesn't no, get, ahead, like, get ahead of themselves you're totally right i mean you can't color an entire like movement based off of like the like the most uh like extreme examples extremists or yeah. like the, yeah the, the most bad actors right the same as like you know yeah i'm sure there are anti-semites also denims he's made western culture is the best comments before and his latest video is about Nick Fuentes. It describes him as mildly right. Yeah, so... Because I want you to know, this is my general rule, all right? My general rule on... I don't know if I could say content creators as a whole, but let's just call them content creators as a whole. Because a little bit more complicated than that. But my, my criticism... Or not criticism. My opinion is entirely dependent on the type of person that is criticizing or agreeing with me, right? So if I find that a creator that I respect sees something I say or do and they're like, no, this is not it, this ain't it, queen, I will genuinely reconsider. And I've even said the same thing about people sending emails. If, if there is ever something that you feel like I said incorrectly, so Let's say, for example, if I did not correct that chatter and I continued to say, oh, you know, the Indians that used to live here in the U.S. And you're like, I really don't like that you're using this like outdated language. You can write me an email and be like, hey, I just want to say you should say indigenous people instead of that just because of like the baggage that's with that word. And this is what indigenous people prefer to be called and blah, 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 blah. I'm down open to genuine criticism that actually matters and that's actually coming from people who are not so biased that they are totally blind to reality. But when it's someone like Asmongold disagreeing with me, the guy that's calling Nick Fuentes a known Nazi, calling him mildly right, in what universe do I ever respect that opinion? Like, do I ever look at that and say, maybe I'm wrong? Hmm. Hmm. 
hmm, well, this person is disagree. I'm down to listen to the disagreement, <laughs> okay? I'm down to listen to the disagreement and hear and see if there's any coherent argument, right? But I'm not gonna blanket be like, maybe I should reconsider because this person is disagreeing with me. However, if, again, someone I respect, content creators that I actually do respect, who I think have good opinions, who I think actually try to make the world a better place, say, I think that this was bad. I think you said this was bad. What you said here was bad. Okay, I am super down to listen to why. Um, all right, what, where was it? Asmongold. Did the, did the video get deleted? Oh, yeah, this, this protest, this video was insane, by the way. The title is UCLA protesters fuck around and find out. Like, dude, what the fuck? This has the same energy as uh, XQC reacting to that one video of, like, um, of instances of genocide and it's like huge reactions whoa look at the bomb it's crazy like dude those are people like i don't know how to tell you this that's those are those are people like real people like real as real as you and i no offense, Denims, but I hate streamers. Literally, that's fine, okay? Like, you guys should hate streamers, <laughs> okay? Streamers are guilty until proven innocent, all right? <laughs> I hate streamers. I hate streamers, okay? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, God, Jesus. YouTubers are where it's at. YouTubers are so... There are so many YouTubers are so normal. It's like... There's a, an occasional... We it's just like avoid the drama YouTubers and the rest of them are like normal. As long as you avoid the drama YouTubers. Oh, and the family YouTubers. Those people are fucking weird. Those people are weird. Ugh. What the fuck is... We need to make that illegal immediately, by the way. Recording your children for content and making money off them. ...that are Palestinian, you know, pro-Palestinian, but that's not... That's not the majority of them. That's, yeah. that's, there, that's there, are also, there are also people who are trying to co-opt. Like, there's always, like, a bunch of charlatans on Twitter who are actually neo-Nazis, like, openly. But then they'll that be like, oh, yeah, yeah, how about them Jews? Like, they'll, they'll try to, like, sneak in to be like, oh, yeah, we love Palestine, right? When, in fact, you've, uh, you look, you it's, know, a couple tweets down and they're fucking... Me, I'm use my friends. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that is actually part of the reason why these student organizers are very careful with who they let into the encampment as well. Because they don't want to make sure that they're... They want to make sure that there's no one that is, like in support of Palestine or seemingly in support of Palestine that's in there to say like some fuck shit. And they do right, a very good job with that too. Wait, is this the video? It got changed. That's hilarious. The title and the description got changed. Um, basically, Elon unbanned Nick Fuentes for anyone who, who didn't know or anyone who missed it. Um... And it said, mildly right-wing political commentator Nick Fuentes gets unbanned on Twitter. That's what it said before. Or it said something along those lines. I remember the word mild being in there and right-wing being in there, which is hilarious. Hilarious. Um, it was sarcasm. Let me guess, you also don't think I was joking. And that worldview is consistent for you? <laughs> oh my God, dude. Oh my God. Dude, someone... Nazi shit. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, and that's smart for them to do. Yeah, so uh, that's, it, that's it, the other reason why they don't let everyone into the encampment. Yeah, I mean, I, I can kind of understand that, but I think that it's also really determined based off of the university. Like, the truth is that the university should have the final say on whether the encampment like that should exist or not. And I, I think that really, if the university is okay with it, then of course the encampment should exist because they're the ones that determine what the rules are there. But That's I think really... if the university... If the oh, univers here it is. Here it is. Sorry. One second. Asmongold, called Nick, Asmongold calls neo-Nazi Nick Fuentes mildly right-leaning political commentator. Mildly right-leaning political commentator Nick Fuentes gets unbanned. And then look at this. Elon unbanned a, quote, white supremacist. What's the quote there for? <laughs> he called... Nick Fuentes calls himself a white supremacist. He 
he calls himself this. Like, I don't know what to explain to you. I don't know how how much more complicated I have to make it. And I don't understand. You do, why is it in quotes? The quotes are also a joke. Like, okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, let's get back to the video. University doesn't want the encampment. I don't think that the students have the right to make an encampment there. I, I think that's unfair. I mean, I think that ultimately, ultimately, especially like protests will always be disruptive, obviously. But if protests are only determined by how lawful they are, you can write a law to make any protest illegal, which Americans kind of have, as a matter of fact. I don't know if it would how shock you, you to find out if, if I were to tell you that in the state, in your state, in Texas, if you want to yeah. work for the Texas uh, state, if you want to work for the city, you have to actually sign a law that says you will never engage in boycotting or uh, demanding divestment or demanding sanctions on the state of Israel. Did you know this? That's a direct <laughs> no, violation of First that. Amendment rights. A direct violation. Well, how did that even happen? Um, APAC. APAC wrote the legislation. Uh, wow. This was legislation that actually two- I want to uh, hear it back. This is what I mean, by the way. Like, he doesn't know the stuff that he's talking about. Like, basic information that the rest of us know, It's it, for him, it's like groundbreaking. Like, whoa, I didn't... Wait, 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 wait. So you're telling me if you throw food out, it won't get moldy in my house? Whoa! Wait, really? Like... Ending divestment or demanding sanctions on the state of Israel. Did you know this? <laughs> That's a direct no, violation of First that. Amendment rights. A direct violation. Well, how did that even happen? Um, APAC. APAC wrote the legislation. Uh, wow. This was legislation that actually... Two uh, uh, Jewish prominent members of Congress were very much against, as a matter of fact. Bernie Sanders and Dianne Feinstein have um, openly criticized this for obvious First Amendment violation <laughs> boundaries. Yeah, I've never heard of that before. Yeah. Like, I, it's, I heard well, there's like some anti-Semitism bill that was happening today. I, I haven't read about it yet, but yeah. I didn't know there was something that was going on that was already on the books, man. That's crazy. Yeah. They, well, would it shock you to find out that there's actually 35 other states, many of them red states, as a matter of fact? that claim that they care about First Amendment uh, and, and no restriction on free speech. Ironic, because yeah. Texas Governor Greg Abbott actually said that, um, you know, in, in Texas college campuses, even outsiders can come to campus and demonstrate to the best of their ability. It was, it was, it was like 2021, I think. Uh, 2019. He oh, wrote so a, a little bit later, or earlier, yeah. Yeah he, yeah, he signed legislation in the law, which he has personally violated himself by using, mm -hmm. using the government. So free Are speech- Are you talking about the recent one? Yeah. So yeah. no, no matter what happens, like the idea that like every, every single, um, every single protest has to go through like a permits process. What did you do, Mary? Um, what is this drawing? I came late. Uh, <laughs> big fan of, <laughs> say it. What are you a big fan of? Hmm? Huh? <laughs> uh, the drawing is the green circle is the protesters. The stick figure is like a random guy that doesn't want to protest but wants to go to class. And he's mad because he has to walk around the protesters to go to class. This is, is obviously, I think, a little bit ridiculous because, like, it is there. That permit process is there to, like, genuinely make the state restrict certain kinds of speech and only allow other kinds of speech to exist, which, in my opinion, is in direct violation of... To be fair, Americans are, like, allergic to walking. <laughs> to be fair... I swear to God, have you guys... I, have you guys ever had an experience with someone else when you're like, yeah, we can just park a little farther, I don't mind walking, and they're like... What are you, crazy? I'm sorry, you're suggesting I use my legs to walk. But we'll die. You don't know. It's like, what are you talking? We can just, what the fuck are you talking about? It's not that. I would really just rather you just park here and we just walk for five minutes than do this fucking circle for 10 minutes trying to find a parking spot, please. Unless, unless you've been walking all day or... I don't know, unless there's something, some reason, okay? It's not that big a deal. <laughs> People will spend more time driving for a spot than just take, than talking. I just, I, 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 
Or you ever tell someone like, oh, it's not that it's not that far. It's like a 10 minute walk. And they're like. I'm sorry, how far did you say it was a, a 10, a 10 minute walk? Yeah, we're driving. <laughs> what is not that far? <laughs> it's not that far. It's right there. We're both able bodied. Like, I don't understand. What's the problem? We do not have a time rush. Just, just, just do we just go. <laughs> anyways, anyways, sorry. All right. That's me hating the America car brain. Of the First Amendment in the way that we understand it. I so people, people make laws all the time. Oh, yeah, of course they do. And yeah, I, I see what you're saying. Absolutely. And, and I think that there's probably a middle ground with that where it's like if people are protesting and, you know, there's a tent there, it's OK. It's probably not a really big deal. But I still do think that the university or especially other like private businesses should have every right to tell people not to be there because it's also their private property. Like, I think somebody's right to protest is really important, but I think it's also important that somebody has a right to have autonomy over their own property, especially whenever if something happens to somebody there, they could get sued for it, too. <laughs> Good news, Asmongold. We already have those rights. <laughs> we already have private property rights. You don't have to worry about it. Like, <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry. We're good. We're good. You, 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 we're good. <laughs> So, yeah. and, and I think that that's really kind of what the problem with like a lot of this is, is that I, I think that like you and I probably align with a lot of the different like opinions that we have in terms of like Israel or Zionism or anything like that. I just don't really think that these methods are effective. And I, I think that they alienate a lot more people than they bring in. I think, like, if, whenever the, I'm, I think if the student, I think if the student brothers were not effective, one, yeah. they would not have actually had uh, multiple universities at this point meet their demands, like in Northwestern and in Brown University. And now, uh, as recently as a couple hours ago, Rutgers University has uh, met the demands of uh, Students for Justice for Palestine, um, uh, which has led to the dispersal of the peaceful dispersal of the encampments. But beyond that, I think that another testament to the success of these uh, protests is the violent reaction of the state, because in some ways, like police behaving in this way also galvanizes yeah. a lot of the protesters. Um, as a matter of fact, like this entire conversation started originally quietly at Vanderbilt University, where a couple of uh, bands of mine, as a matter of fact, got suspended from school for doing an encampment. Then students at Columbia University saw that and said, fuck that. That's bullshit. We should divest as well. <clears throat> and then their uh, encampment began after that. And then they got suppressed by the police. And then their encampment grew. And now this is in almost every single state, with the exception of, I think, like 10 uh, at this point and also, uh, happening globally as a matter of fact. So in a way, in a way they were profoundly successful, so successful well, that you know, a lot more, you know a lot more about this than I do. So I'm kind of curious. Uh, so you're talking about like how Brown university and a lot of these other, <laughs> you know, a lot about this more than I do. Color me shocked. Wait, the person who talks about politics for work might know a little bit more. No, no. No, 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 no. That's crazy talk. That's crazy. Stop. Stop. Stop it, guys. Come on. Stop. White girls on TikTok are complaining about not having graduation ceremonies. Look, if they're right and I'm wrong, that's cool with me. But man, I could never be. I, I didn't want to. I didn't even go to my graduation. OK, so maybe I'm not the best person. And I dreaded. I think I actually did end up having to go for it because my parents forced me to. I did or I didn't. I don't remember, but I didn't want to my high school graduation. Um, so I think graduation is a waste of fucking time and also money. I don't care. Um, but. Man, I could not imagine having my head so far up my ass that I go on the Internet to complain that my graduation ceremony is canceled because people are protesting genocide. It's like, dude, do you hear yourself? Like, do you hear yourself? You're, you're still a graduate. You still get your degree. What, you didn't get to sit in a room for three hours and then walk on the stage? Like, oh my God. Like, <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. If that's mean and I'm wrong, fine. I don't give a shit. I'm wrong. I'll take it. I'll, I'll collect my L. It's fine. Maybe, maybe white girls do deserve to graduate, okay? Maybe they do. I don't care. 
I don't, I'm, I don't give a shit, man. <laughs> Fucking. Some people like the symbolism of it, but I mostly agree. I just feel like when you recognize like, oh, it's getting canceled because people are protesting something that's so important. It's fucking genocide. You put your life in perspective and you recognize, wow, I can't believe I'm so privileged that I get to get a degree in a first world country with a Gucci belt and actually maybe participate in a job force and make my own decisions. At least I'm not getting actively genocided. I'm just going to accept the fact that I'm like very privileged and yeah, I don't get to do that, but that's fine. That's fine. There's not much a correlation in protesting genocide and canceling it's graduation hard to believe ceremony. He empathized with protesters when there are clips from his stream when he openly laughing when police attack protesters or detain some of them. He is full of shit. Yes. Yes. Um. I didn't go by prom, but my ex is prom. Nice. Graduation fucking sucked. Yeah, it's, graduation's lame. Graduation ceremonies suck. If you like graduation ceremonies, I'm sorry. That's me. I think that they're dumb anyways. That That's just me. I think sitting in a room waiting until you get to walk on stage is just like, that's my, that's my idea of hell. <laughs> like, actually, the only idea of hell that's worse than that is having a wedding. That is, I know it sounds funny because I'm a public figure. Fucking terrible. The idea of being the center of attention. Thanks for streaming. This boomer and... on her son's account is learning a lot. <laughs> DNML. Oh, catch your comrades. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for the three months. <laughs> but the idea for me, listen, and to be clear, as weddings, weddings, going as a guest, great. So much fun. Especially, I don't know if you guys have been to like South Asian weddings. Like, Bengali weddings, Pakistani weddings, Indian weddings. Oh my God. The food is so bussin'. The music go hard. It's just you, and you don't have to pay shit. You just get to show up and give a gift. Hell yes. Oh my God. That's living. That's living well. But man, being the center of attention on your wedding day, and then you have to spend all this money and you're getting charged insane fees you're, because everything has a wedding tax on it. And we all, we made it up. Some people spend 20K. What's the average amount of money? That, what's the median actually? That, that number is more important. Median cost of weddings. $26,000 was the average wedding cost, but three and four couples spent less than $20,000. So the majority of Americans are spending how much? It's not telling me the exact number. It's, I found something that ex, it's explaining to me. Average versus median. <laughs> wow. Thank you for explaining that to me. Where, where is it? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I guess the whole pandemic kind of like destroyed it <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> but people were spending, the majority of people were spending about like $18,000 on weddings in 2018. So let me get this straight. You want some, you, to, to throw a wedding, you have to be the center of attention, okay? You have to get super stressed all day planning out like invitations and working with a wedding planner and like getting catering and, and decorations and renting the space and renting your clothes or buying your clothes and doing hair and makeup and all this other shit. You just spend like months, weeks to months stressing just to spend a fifth of a hundred grand $18,000. <laughs> and for what? <laughs> like, for what? Like, that's fucking stupid. That is dumb. That is dumb. I, I, I guess if you, if you have, if that's an idea of fun for you and you have that money to spend, more power to you. But man, fuck, that is my idea of like hell. That's like, that is, no. That sounds terrible to me. I, I, oh God. 
I'm so glad I'm an incel. I ain't paying for all that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <sighs> but it was something we really wanted to do for our families, but that was just us. Yeah. I mean, like, listen, it's your life. Make the, the decisions you want to make, right? Literally, my partner asked about eloping because of this shit. Yeah, I mean, but let me say something. Let me say something. I have a lot of respect for people who host small weddings. I think those people are really cool. Okay, having no weddings is a little lame, but maybe, and I'm okay with being a little bit of a lame person that's cool with me, but people who host small weddings where they rent a small-ish space or they do it on like a beach or something like that, and they spend maybe like $1,000 max or like maybe maybe 2000 you're so cool you're a very cool person in my books Pers personally you're a very cool person personally person personal that sounds like a that just sounds like a fun party you don't need to have anything crazy what do you mean lame no wedding is the most based well because <laughs> if you have an opportunity to throw a party you should throw a party and not throwing one is lame and i'm just a little lame so that's okay with me we did like a 5k wedding in a, in a large middle of nowhere backyard for 60 people that's cool that's fucking cool that's really cool in, in my opinion in in my opinion that's really cool okay let's get back to the video let's get back to asthma goal and being an idiot and not knowing anything okay universities the students have had their their demands met and so whenever you say them, oh okay well the ones that have did they ever like have the police remove the uh the encampments because no. like i think if the university is allowing it to happen then i feel like the protest is totally justified it's completely fine no there was police presence on all the campuses as well and uh, the police actually said yeah. that they would be uh interested in violently dispersing the encampments even at rutgers university but the but the administration uh, looked at the demands and found them to be reasonable. See, the thing, the thing is, <clears throat> there's two ways to always deal with conflict management, no matter what. You either escalate, yeah. you either use the violent arm of the state to violently apprehend students, break apart the encampments, use pepper spray, tear gas, and, and uh, rubber bullets that, you know, cops literally shot some of the members of my community in the face with uh, last night. And, I mean, uh, and there, whenever I looked at the, whenever I watched, because I, I watched the whole thing happen, I didn't really see a lot of the police officers shooting people that weren't shooting fire extinguishers at them. Like, I'm, I'm sorry, but I think if you shoot a, if you, if you are spraying a fire extinguisher at a police officer, I think they have every right to shoot you with a rubber bullet. You shouldn't be doing that. That's disgusting. Well, I don't know if. Okay. If I get clipped, I get clipped. <laughs> Spraying a cop with a fire extinguisher is objectively hilarious, <laughs> okay? You shouldn't do it. It's illegal, guys. It's illegal. Don't do it. But if you did it, it would be so funny, okay? I, it's, it's, it, uh, uh, ah, this white stuff is all over me. <laughs> That's hilarious, objectively very funny frosting the big yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, I just uh, home alone type of shit yeah <laughs> first you gotta scream he's on fire like the video game NBA jam and then spray yeah <laughs> this news, thank you for the give it up <laughs> yeah literally equivalent to like silly string yeah <laughs> pie in the face exactly exactly yes but anyways how could you endorse being mean to cops you know that's a crime it's a crime it's illegal it's illegal when will you learn interactions consequences <laughs> like oh my god man. you're simping for cops man <laughs> F fucking cops it's it's about it's against cops okay <laughs> They suck. Your cat is so your cat is so chill. Give it pets. Yes. He always kind of looks a little bit mad, but he's actually the sweetest sweetheart on the planet. Actually. Also, thank you, Mary. It will shock you to find out, but rubber bullets are not supposed to be directed uh, directly at protesters. It's supposed to be a less than lethal uh, 
apprehension method or riot control method. And when they actually do are, shoot are, someone are in the face, they can kill them. To the people, like you're not supposed no, no, to. Supposed to yeah, yeah, against against fire extinguishers, what they're supposed to do is shoot it on the ground. These guys were directly aiming it at the faces of uh, of students. And I'm also, sure it wasn't like just it, so. it wasn't just students that were holding fire extinguishers. It was pretty much anyone and everyone. It was a you know, it was basically a kill zone. You can kill people with rubber bullets, by the way. That's why they call it oh, less absolutely. than lethal. Yeah, no, you you definitely can. But I'm not I'm not going to tell the police officers they're wrong for defending themselves against somebody who's blowing a, a fire extinguisher at them. I think that's ridiculous. I think, I, that, I think that they should have every right to defend themselves against that. Like do, you they think the students, do you think the students have a right to defend themselves? They, Me when I think Israel has a right to defend itself. They weren't being attacked. Wait, they weren't no. being shot. No, they, the cops were, at that point, the cops were apprehending them. They were, they were arresting oh, well, them on site. Yeah, because they were, yes, because they were breaking the law. And the university wanted them off the campus. Yeah, and they have every right to ask them to leave the campus. They didn't do it. And of course the cops would have to remove them. Uh, like, let me ask you this way. Do you think it's an okay. apor- do you find it to be a just and proportionate response to unarmed students? Um, and many of them, almost all of them are unarmed. You can't just invoke the law as the reason cops are allowed to do whatever they want to do. That's fucking stupid. That's a really dumb ideological system. It's just really stupid. Because, like, I can make his argument for him better than he can, which is, yeah, but if you're currently actively being detained and then you decide to spray a fire extinguisher at a cop, of course they're going to fucking shoot rubber bullets at you. Is it right? Is it wrong? Fucking, you tell me. But, yeah, no shit, they're going to do that, right? That's, that's, why wouldn't they? Done. Easy. And the ones that had, I guess, fire extinguishers yeah. is, is few. Um, hey, it's tofu. Stop. Um, do you think it's an appropriate response to violently, in full riot gear, uh, violently apprehend and, you know, assault students uh, because, they, because, you know, they are peacefully demonstrating, but the university now has uh, demanded that they disperse? Like, um, well, we, I think there's two different categories of that. So uh, for the students that are not being violent, because a lot of the students were being violent, they were throwing things at the cops, they were spraying fire extinguishers at them. I'm sorry, but that's not a peaceful This protest. is what people said, by the way, about uh, BLM. And then when we actually had information like like data on the BLM protests, we found that out of all of the different instances of protests, 3% of the protests had violence in them. That's not 3% of each individual protest was violent. That's like, let's say there were 100 different protests in 100 different major cities. Three of those major cities had violent protests. And the rest were all peaceful. But guess what? You only need a little bit of video footage to paint a narrative that this group of people is super violent. And it's the same thing here. You just need a little bit of footage that shows anyone fighting back against cops and then you can paint the entire thing as, like, violence. Meanwhile, cops will literally shoot just at the air because an acorn landed a little too close to them. And they're like, fire! They're fired, shots, fi- shots fired! Shots fired! And then I started blasting. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, maybe one of my stray bullets could have killed someone, but uh, did you consider that uh, an acorn fell near me and I got scared? And then I started shooting blindly. Also, yeah, very important as well, very important as well, is how we define violent protesters, right? You have to recognize that a lot of the violence at the few BLM protests that, that became violent, a lot of the violence was against property. It wasn't like people were, like, shanking other people on the street. It was that people were breaking windows. Like, there is a massive difference. Is it still technically violence? Yes. Yes, we're not disagreeing there. I'm saying simply that there is a huge difference between breaking down a fucking window and shooting somebody. I know, I know, crazy. I actually pe- put people's lives above property. <laughs> what am I, a commie? Like, come on, man. <laughs> fucking come on. Uh, Astronaut Shark, thank you for the prime. Thank you. One of the cops uh, in Colombia fired his service weapon, by the way. He didn't hit anyone, but why did he even have his service weapon out in the first place? To apprehend peaceful students. Yeah. 
protest. If you're spraying a fire extinguisher with a police officer, you're not being peaceful. So if the well, police officer is violent in return, no, I actually think it's totally fine. No, uh, well, here's the thing. That's the reason why this is really important, right? Like, the, the reason yeah, why, yeah. like, I'm glad I went to the encampment. I'm glad that, like, all this was filmed. It was peaceful yeah. until the police came with weapons and with riot gear and started, uh, started apprehending with physical force the students. Uh, well, if you look at the if you look at the visuals from before yeah. the police officers actually came onto campus, it was actually quite peaceful. People are dancing, people are singing, uh, people are eating food and chilling overall. It's it's actually the university that, and this is what many students are saying as well, uh, yeah. both at Columbia University, even students who might not have agreed with the overall cause of the protest. Now, uh, now I thought Hassan was against this type of debate. Lord stuff, why is he doing this? Um, in my opinion, this is my opinion. You can have whatever opinion you want. This is more of a conversation between two people who are like coworkers, I feel like. Like it, it he's not going for dunks. Neither of them are going for dunks. Neither of them are trying to like make the other person look like a fool. It's more of like a conversation of like everyone's calling it a debate because that's what everybody calls any conversation between two people on the internet. Um but yeah, Hassan also likes Asmongold personally. Um I mean, th the thing is there are like two things that make Asmund Gold, I think, very redeemable. Um, number one is that he's not knowingly a fucking moron. Every time he says something stupid, it's because he doesn't know anything about what he's talking about. Versus a lot of other people who are on the pro Israel side who are against the protesters, they know they're wrong and they don't give a shit because they don't like brown people or they think Islam is evil or they think whatever. And when someone doesn't know shit, when it's like unintentional ignorance, you can actually change that person's mind. Does he change his mind here? Fucking, I don't know. Just, you, I, I haven't watched it all. We're just 33 minutes in. But there's a very big difference between talking to someone who doesn't know anything about what they're talking about and talking to someone who already knows and is like, yeah, I'm aware. I want to be evil. <laughs> like, yes. The other thing is, um, uh, in this is my opinion. In my opinion, Asmongold is not a grifter. He just says what he says and tries to be consistent in his worldview and says a lot of stupid shit on the way there. And that, you would be surprised. That alone is enough. That alone is enough. Even the fact that um, Asmongold, in response to Hassan getting canceled for like the bajillionth time, I think Asmongold said, why are you guys making up stuff to hate Hassan? Just hate him for the stuff you hate him for. So, like, you can hate Asmongold for sure, and you can think he's a total dumb fuck, but at least he's not a grifter, and at least the shit that he says, he tries to be consistent. He just has begun with a really dumb ideology, and now he has to, like, either double down to stay in that ideology or realize that ideology is fucking stupid. So, yeah, I, I think that that's important. So that, that's my opinion. That's my, that's, that's my opinion. He had the same views with January 6th too. Oh, did he say that like the people, the January 6th, uh, were obviously going to get arrested or whatever and get killed or whatever, because they're invading. Um, I guess it's, it's some, it's the weird private slash property slash public property, uh, category or whatever. But, um, yeah. Now feel uh, that the university has left them out and and left their and compromised their safety personally by bringing outsiders, specifically cops, uh, to come in and violently apprehend students who weren't doing anything. Who were just also as far as Asmongold's community, I think um, we're not going to comment on lurkers because lurkers are normal people. Okay, almost objectively, if you're a lurker, you're probably normal. Okay. So I'm sure that most of his lurkers are probably normal. Now, of his chatters, I feel like there's a loud 20% or like 30% of the people who chat in Aswan Gold's community that are fucking insane. Like genuinely, there's no saving them. Like those people are crazy. Like... It was, it, to be honest, it was very funny, though, <laughs> seeing Asmongold chatters talk about me and they're like, her career is over. It's like, 
you're so dumb. It's funny. It's like, it's funny how dumb you are. I'm sorry to be mean, but like, oh my God, can't you be like the normal people in chat? <laughs> you're done. You're done. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. It's just sad. It's just very sad. Also, enlightened centrism is very alluring. Self-consistency becomes the dominating goal. So, so much so that you forget whether certain things are just or unjust as long as you can square everything. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Petful. Pet, please. Thank you for the two months. Uh, but yeah. Yeah. Just like DGG saying Hassan has fallen off and his career is dead because he only had 20K for some period of time. Utter delusion and embarrassment, really? Yeah, I mean, it's the same thing. It's the same shit. <laughs> it's the same bullshit. It's the same shit. And, and you have to understand that the people in that community, um, not taking a side, but didn't you recently put a bounty on Asman? No. <laughs> no. Try again. But... You have to understand the same people that are concerned tro trolling and they're like pearl clutching um, about my bounty, my very serious bounty. These are the same people that like want to dox me. They're the same people. They just say whatever they should, they think they can say to make themselves or their enemies look bad, to make themselves look better and to make enemies look bad. It's the same people who get mad about cancel culture as well. Yeah, it's never about actual any, any real accountability. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So let's get back into it, shall we? I'm harming anyone who are simply demanding in the most peaceful way they possibly can, like literally, that uh, the university divest from yeah. uh, a, a violent state that they are uh, funding <laughs> oh, wow. and facilitating. I, I get that. I, I also totally disagree with it. I think the university should have every right to decide who is and isn't on their property. And I think in the instances that you were giving me an example of earlier, like Brown, I think that Brown didn't ask the police to come in and Brown allowed those protests to happen. And I think that's totally fine. But if the university doesn't want those people there, I think that at a certain point, they have every right to have the police come in and remove them. And the truth is that I don't think that the police were overly violent to a lot of those people. I, I really no, I, don't. I think. I mean, there's 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 a lot of there's a lot of visuals of of uh, people like bleeding profusely from the head, well, either due to getting hit in the head. But that's, this but is that's a common violent. misconception as well that like rubber bullets are fine and they're really not that bad. Like, go get hit by a rubber bullet and come back and tell me that. <laughs> Especially if you get hit by a rubber bullet in like the wrong place, like on your face, or if it's really close to you. At worst, it hurts bad. Um, or sorry, at best, it hurts bad. At worst, you're like, you can get blinded. <laughs> I got a concussion from wood. Imagine a rubber bullet. A rubber bullet to the head can kill you. Can it? I don't know if it can or can't. I just know that it's shot with enough force that you can... You, I've, I've seen people who've gotten like these gigantic uh, bruises and like it's bloody. It's like, oh my God, Jesus, fuck. Oh, to the temple, I bet. Yeah. I mean, I know the golden rule is unless you are using not, not, a, not an, uh, uh, an airsoft gun, not a BB gun, unless you're using a gun that is literally hollow, it's a, it's a prop. There's no mechanism that can even shoot anything. If you cut it open inside, it's just empty on the inside. Unless you are holding that, you do not pull the trigger with a gun at anything ever, unless you're intending to severely harm or kill that person. Maybe the one exception is like what? Paint guns, paintball guns, because they're made to not cause lethal damage. And you are doing it in a place where people are wearing at least some armor and stuff. Um, vet here, non-lethal rounds, rubber bolts can definitely kill people. Yeah, okay. Like I said, my understanding of good gun safety is just never, ever, 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 doesn't matter what the gun is, pull the trigger, pointing it at somebody else. <laughs> the two instances 
where the, it's fine is like if the gun is literally hollow, there's not there's no there's no sh there's no firing mechanism. There's nothing. It, there's nothing in it. Or like one of those toy water guns that only like spits out a little bit of water. That's it. And that, that's it. Those are the only two instances where it's OK. It gets me. I get so terrified when people point guns that aren't loaded at people. It's like, dude. Stop, <laughs> like, stop. I understand that there's nothing in there. First of all, what if you're wrong? What if you made a mistake? OK. Or people who, who, who fill it with like a, or like air guns, airsoft guns or like BB guns or whatever. It's like, no, no, it's fine. It's not that bad. It's not that serious. It's like, no, dude, don't fucking point it at someone. Stop. Oh my God. No, no, never, ever, ever. Never, ever, 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 <laughs> ever. That's rule number one. You treat every gun as if it's loaded. Yeah. It's so scary. Also, we have the Eighth Amendment, punishment fit the crime. Protesters were charged with misdemeanors just going, just because you're trespassing peacefully doesn't mean the cops can just kill you. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. My brother shot himself in the hand with a BB gun because he thought it was unloaded. Oh, my God. Ah. When I was in fifth grade, a kid got his dad's guns and he and his friends were playing with the unloaded guns, but they weren't and one of them died. Oh, my God. Also, this is, this can be the size of some of the rubber bullets. They're fucking huge. That is fucking crazy. That is fucking crazy. These aren't even the ones that I've seen. But that is insane. I saw the link that you posted, um, um, Anodyne, but uh, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to show this on Twitch. I think it's fine, but like, I don't want to test it. I think it's because it's like non-lethal, so I think it should be fine. But like, better save the sorry. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's the same image. No, I'm talking about the Twitter link you posted that shows the person that was injured by one of them. Basically, it just shows a picture of a woman who has like this giant, I don't even know what you would call it, um, like bump on her face because of the, the rubber bullet that hit her. And it's like bleeding. It's like, yeah, just because the thing is less lethal doesn't make it good. Also, keep in mind, those are coming with shotgun blast force. Yeah, it's rubber, but that shit will hurt like hell. Like you can break bones. People have broken ribs. That's crazy, court jester. But like also, you're a teenager and teenagers shouldn't even have access to guns, right? Uh, anyways. Right, like you, like that's... Well, it's I, I just, just violence because it is like there's no other... So here, here's an interesting question, right? So like what would you propose as an alternative to that? Like how would oh. how would you solve it? Oh, this is uh, great. Of yeah, yeah. Great question. So my uh, my solution to this would be exactly what Brown and all of these other campuses did, which is to allow the protest to continue, and also meet the demands to the best of your ability, and and take an honest negotiation effort with the students, because ultimately, if you believe personally that these students are in the right, and and it seems like uh, you specifically do think that these students. I think they are have making right. making just demands. Yeah, they are. Right. They, they have every right to protest. And yeah. I, like, for example, like at UT here, like we had a, a lot of protests and uh, it was very disappointing for me to see a lot of people in, in my chat and just in the community in general that were celebrating whenever the police were coming in and removing them because these people were not being violent. They weren't breaking the law. They were just protesting. And I completely support that. Yeah, but until until the university decides that they can't is what you're saying right. for UCLA. Yeah, so that's that's yeah, that's my perspective. So if the so the UT University of Texas Austin uh, administration saying like we don't want these protests on campus, uh, leading to a police response would be would be just then. But because you, you, you're think also you you did celebrate motherfucker. He literally had a has a video on his YouTube that's still up that says UCLA protesters fuck around and find out where he cheers on these people getting hit with rubber bullets for God forbid the the protesting of genocide <laughs> like I, uh, I don't know his editors make the titles 
Okay, well, do you think that shit would fly with anyone else? First of all. Second of all, who is hiring his editors? He is. <laughs> also, who is laughing in the video? He is. Like, the, the editor is, like, not related at all. Like, that's not, it's not good enough. Um, audio office player, thank you for the five months. Maybe the green, thank you for the seven months. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to take a stance. Okay. This is bad. This is going to be a bad stance. It's going to be a bad stance. Okay. Which is the only reason, okay, you should be defending private property or private property laws or the police defending private property is for precedent. That is it. Okay, this idea, like, in my opinion, the police even showing up there was unjustified. It was unjustified and we should treat it that way, right? If the protesters were actively engaging in like burning the buildings down or something, okay, I understand. But in my opinion, they were unjustified to even be there. They were peacefully protesting. But if you're going to defend the police being there, all right, you desperately need to take it from the stance of precedent. Okay, because there is a good reason to have in current day America private property laws. And that's so that if some piece of shit racist is showing up on your lawn, you can say, get off my property or I'll call the cops on you. And you know they listen to that shit. You have to think about how the law can work for you, not against you. Not just against you, rather. So if you're going to defend cops... <laughs> Okay, if you're going to do it, at least do it on the front of precedent, not in the and like the justification of the violence. That's stupid. That's really dumb. That's so dumb. <laughs> Anyways. Also, Gremlin, thank you for the gift. So thanks. It's nice of you. What about defending my right to Eve's bunny suit? Huh? <laughs> uh, I think the real positive from this debate, though, is that fence sitters and Asmund's community um, have heard someone who knows what's going on talk about the situation. Yes, totally agree. Yep. K Dog Rocks, thank you for the 10 months. Miss Noob said, thank you for the gift sub. Thank you. And also, Old Thumb, thank you for the two gift sub. Dang, thank you for the five gift subs. Thank you guys. Thank you all. That's really nice of everyone. Oh, go ahead. No, no, go. You go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think that it really kind of depends on the situation. In general, I think the answer to that is probably yes. Uh, but I'm sure that there are probably some circumstances, especially with people that are just there and not taking up space and are just talking and not really like obstructing anyone, not setting up encampments and they're just there. Yeah, I would think that's really kind of fucked up for them to remove them for that reason. But in the context of what happened at UCLA, I, I don't think that it was fucked up because it had been going on for multiple days. And, you know, like it, it doesn't like I mean, let's be real. Who really gives a fuck about the, you know, the pavement and everything? But they are graffitiing everything and they're destroying a lot of things. Like I see windows getting knocked out. Uh, in, no, in there were, there were, I don't think there were any uh, windows knocked out of UCLA. You might be confusing that with Columbia. And the only oh, windows that were knocked right. out. That's what I was saying in multiple places. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, no, so I'm Columbia University, sure. they broke into Hamilton Hall to take it over, um, which is, again, I I will defend that as well. I have defended that. I think that's perfectly that's valid. I, mean, like, I don't it's know. Trespassing. It's trespassing, it's right? Well, yeah, well, it's. Never ask a woman her age. Never ask a man his salary. And never ask Denim's her opinion on graffiti. Sorry. My bad. My bad. Guys, it's illegal. You can't do it. Stop. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. Stop doing illegal things. <laughs> it's not just trespassing. It's, it's like breaking. Also, yeah, I would much rather see graffiti than a stupid fucking billboard. Any day of the week. All right. Like you're. You're breaking the windows to trespass, right? Yeah. It's one thing like, oh, we so, just walked so material, in. So material damage to facilities. To yeah, material damage to facilities is like, is is uh, an injustice is what you're what you're saying here in this situation. Which, you might have that opinion. Yeah, it absolutely Okay, so, so then don't you think that the university's reaction by sending thousands, using millions of dollars of taxpayer dollars and sending in thousands of cops to break every door 
inside of Hamilton Hall and most of the windows outside of Hamilton Hall caused an infinite more uh, amount of material damage than just simply meeting the students halfway at the bargaining table. But what were I they completely supposed to agree do? With that. And the reason why is because it's their property to damage and they have every right to do that. And the law has to be upheld to a degree. But, the, but doesn't that but doesn't that mean that like the university kind of doesn't give a shit about the material harm in that circumstance? Because if, well, if they cared about what happens about to the two windows. Own, well, it's not about it's not about the material harm necessarily. It's about having the autonomy of the material harm and being able to decide what you do with your own material and what you do with your own property and what you don't do with it. And I think that's that's extremely important. And it, it's it's worth more and it's more important than any actual material or piece of property in itself. It's the essence that somebody has the, their own autonomy to decide what they do with what they own. Because one of the things very, that they also did at Columbia was falsely claim. Fucking stupid. I'm sorry. I. Oh. Yes, we all know that you have the right to do whatever you want to your own property. But if the people at the university are complaining that they are really upset about the property damage and then they bring people in who do more property damage, isn't that just them showing that they don't actually care about the property damage? We're not debating on whether or not you're allowed to destroy your own property. We're saying that the university's proposed reason for caring about this is bullshit. It's fucking bullshit. Because if they cared, the last thing they would do is bring more people in to fuck up more shit. The idea that they're like, no, well, they just really get mad when other people break the stuff is so dumb. That is so fucking dumb. Can you imagine someone comes into your house and starts like breaking your windows and you're like, whoa, 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 stop. So you call the police so they come and shoot your dog too. It's like, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. And then you, can, you can't say you care about the stuff at that point. Because if you cared about the stuff, you would have tried to de-escalate the situation. You don't care about the stuff. You care about, like, why would they shoot your dog? Clueless. <laughs> You're clueless. <laughs> oh, no. I want to be you. I want to be you, Kick808. I want to be you. Someone pull up like a chart or a diagram or something that shows how many cops, how many dogs cops kill. That um, falsely claimed that like these students were actually harming and being anti-Semitic and like scaring Jewish students, even though ironically, Jewish students were overrepresented and those arrested in the first uh -huh. sweep. So once again, it's it's the university that is claiming that police action must be met, like police action must occur upon these students because they have made up a fake reason, a bullshit reason, really, that uh, these students are somehow scaring uh, uh, the, the uh, student population and, and threatening them when no well, such I mean, evidence existed for that, only to, only to cause far greater harm to the student population because then they violently assaulted and arrested hundreds of students. Sharky, thank you for the gift, though. So it's, like, sure, it's a bit of a, it's a, bit of a I'm cutting my nose to spite my face situation, don't you think? But it's their face to cut, and it's their well, decision not really. to make. Because it is well, the students. Well, it really is because it's, it's, their, it's their right. It's their business and or not business. Sorry, really quickly. I just have to say something in response to a chatter. I'm not saying the protest is wrong, but to get actual change, you need to hit the source. Stop giving the school money. We know not enough people will follow this to make it work. We were talking about American protests in the last 24 years. People don't respect the protest. If demands don't also include compromise, I'm not saying it's right. It's just how things are. I'm not justifying it. Literally telling you how to make a protest more impactful. I don't know how to tell you this, but um, no one will ever listen to you, ever, if you're not part of the cause. Um, <laughs> you are right now. Let me clarify. I, I thought you understood when I said listen to, I meant listen to not hear like i can hear someone say something really stupid listen to means actually intake the advice no one gives a shit about your opinion on how they can make their protest better if you're just someone who sits at home and criticizes other people um yeah 
Yeah. If you have no skin in the game, why would anyone else listen to you? That seems a little silly. It's like the people who are like, I'm a big ideas guy. <laughs> you know, I'm going to get some people to do all of the hard work and I can just be like, what if we just did this? It's like <laughs> you are the most if you are the ideas guy, <laughs> you're the most annoying person in that group. Just so you know, just so you know. Just so you know. <laughs> Card cracking. Thank you for the prime. Thank you. It's why people hate their bosses. It's like, bitch, you do not do any labor in this job. <laughs> okay. You do not do any of the upkeep for this place. You do not actually do this job. You just kind of sit around, look at us. We tell you what would work and what wouldn't work. And then you tell us, no, I know better than you. That's why people hate bosses and hate managers. It's like, you've never even been protesting. And you're going to tell me how to do my protesting. Okay, well, I'll tell you what, I'll listen to you when you get off your high horse. <laughs> All right. That's a fair deal. Fair deal. Okay, great. You know that Chatter was a man because women know that someone can hear something without listening to it. <laughs> 32 months of showing up to stream. Is this a full-time job? I never got my W-2. <laughs> it's, it's got the same energy as like when people make the do straight men even like women meme and then this one guy's like, I'm literally married, okay? It's like, you know, you can be married to someone and hate them. <laughs> Right? <laughs> you can despise that person and everything about them, but keep them around for other reasons. It's like, just because you're married to one or dating a woman doesn't mean you like women. It just means you like being in a relationship with I women. I want mine too. My taxes are late. Oh, don't make your cat. Isn't being married about love? What are you talking about? What? No, it's not. It's about taxes. Duh. That is the real reason to get married. Taxes and insurance. Come on. Think. Think, Mark. Oh, Bane, thank you for the six months. Thank you. I guess you could say. Uh, but it's their universities. No, universities are a business, for sure. Yeah, no, well, I, I think that in some cases you're probably right. Uh, and I think also, like, a lot of the people that were being violently arrested, I think it takes two to tango in a lot of cases. And I think a lot of these people are being violently arrested, but they're also not complying with what the police are wanting. They're actively breaking the law. And I don't think that's something like, how, how do you... Like, Wait, is he on his slime train as well? Like, so and, and, you bring a really good question, point. Like, well, like, let me, like, yeah, how do you deal with a person that is actively resisting you and so, won't obey the law? Because so, I feel like you have to restrain them somehow, don't you? So you, you actually bring up a really good point that I, uh, I love this conversation. This is not a gotcha at all. Have you ever been arrested? Um, no, I have not. Okay. So I have, I've been pulled over. I've been like detained, but I've never been arrested. Yeah. So I have, um, and it's not, I promise you, it's not a gotcha at all. The reason why I'm bringing this up is because, so resisting arrest is a, is what is always like a tack on charge. Um, yeah. because, uh, cops oftentimes I'm sure you've seen like body camera footage. Well, they'll be like, Oh, stop resisting. Stop resisting. While they literally have like their knee on the neck of a, of a suspect already. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's on the ground. It's and it's, yeah. it is, it's technically, uh, it's technically a bullshit charge. And here's why, because, Getting handcuffed physically, like physical restriction, uh, physical apprehension is actually done in such a way that uh, your body cannot contort in that way. So your body naturally reacts when your arms are behind your back and you're being yeah. placed in, in handcuffs. So it's actually one of those laws that is. Yeah, it, maybe it's just me. I find it funny that has been going so hard about obeying the law. Meanwhile, his stream lives or dies based on developers and other creators claiming his content. Yes, yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it's just, it's silly. Like, nobody builds their moral compass based on the law. And using the law to, like, defend stuff is dumb. It's always been dumb. It always will be dumb. The law is our best attempt at putting morality into words. Meanwhile, morality is something where you know it when you see it. When you see something that's wrong, you know it's wrong. When you see something that's 
right, you know it's right. It's not the only reason you should follow the law, okay, is so you don't get into legal trouble. Everything else you should just do because you want to be a good person. Like, you shouldn't not murder because this, the law says so. You shouldn't not murder because murder's fucked up to do. Like, the legal system is only good for making sure... The only reason you should follow the legal system is to make sure you don't get any felonies or get misdemeanors and make your life harder for no reason because we as a country don't care about people who go to prison. Law is like a standard guideline, but it's enforced within a large band of context. I mean, in, again, in reality, like, the law is just us writing shit as morality shifts and moves and like the general consensus on things shifts and moves. Okay. I would like to put a pin on the 42 minute mark and I would like to get towards the end. I'd like to skip, actually let's skip exactly an hour ahead. Okay. Because I heard it gets better later on in the debate. So I would like to see what else they talk about. There's a video of Biden talking about uh, the George Floyd protest saying, we will not allow any president to quiet our voice. We won't let those who see this as an opportunity to sow chaos, throw up a smokescreen to distract us from the very real and legitimate grievances at the heart of these protests. Now that he's president, however, uh, he basically reinforced the law and order must happen narrative that Donald Trump was uh, advocating for. So my question always is like, well, what is to be done? How do you, um, how do you and many other Americans get our lawfully elected representatives to, to actually follow through, them? actually follow through on the demands uh, that they originally ran on, on the on the promises that they originally made? I don't know, because I think it's a, it's a very complex question, because I'm sure some promises are made, and then somebody gets into office and they realize, wait a minute, it's not that simple, it's not that easy. And I think there are probably instances, I'm not saying this is one of them, I think it's actually in fact not, but I think that there are probably instances where campaign promises are made with partial information, and then whenever the person gets more information, they decide not to do it. Well, I mean, Joe Biden's been like, president, Joe, Joe Biden was, was in elected in office, office and was the vice president. Years. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, no, it, 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 I'm not saying this is an example, but I, I think that there are like there are instances of that. But I don't really know what the what is the option for that? What do you do? Because like I, and, and like this is the question, like, what, what do you think? Because I don't know. Also, great well, point being made in chat. How do people think we got these laws anyways? It's because people fought for them. What's the saying? Like legislation is written in blood. Um, they broke unjust laws by break. Or sorry, they broke unjust laws by breaking them to ensure we had certain rights that were morally correct. Exactly. Precisely. Yes. Hassan makes that point eventually as well. Civil rights movement. Yes. Yes. It's like, we only have the laws we have because people fought against the law. All forms of regulation were written in blood. Yes. Well, it's I like, mean, what do you riot do you like go and like have a recall I, I think at a certain point it's like don't i think a lot of people get tricked into voting for you know this person and i i don't know how to solve that because the democratic and the republican parties are so big it's like how do you how, how do you fight against that but i think that like you just kind of have to and i don't know like what alternative you could do that would have any sort of like real meaningful impact right well this is this is one um vector of pressure like protests campus-wide yeah. protests protests in general on the streets it's a it's a very good and historically very successful way to get the government to meet your demands, even if it's halfway. So that's why I'm in support of the the Palestinian uh, pro Palestinian encampments uh, that are happening all around campuses all around the country. Yeah, I mean, I, I think for me, like my my perspective is that I I support the idea. I support the freedom of speech. I think that at a certain point, you know, whenever you are breaking the law, the law does have to be upheld to a certain extent. But I also think that people's ability to protest should also be upheld. I, I don't I think that, you know, for example, like camping out somewhere for six days and not leaving, even after they tell you to leave and the police tell you to leave. I think that's too much. But oh, I they, also they, even, they, they told them to leave because they said that it was so endangering like, the students yeah. themselves, like in the encampment. My so. problem with Asmongold's worldview is what let's say slavery was legal right now. What would you do? Like, people wanted to protest and march in the streets. 
illegally, without a permit, and they wanted to march against slavery. Nothing, I'd be a slave dumbass. Okay, sorry, to the people who, <laughs> okay, to the white people in chat, okay? <laughs> sorry, my bad. If, if slavery was legal in the U.S., would you really uphold this position? Would you really uphold the position like, well, they, they, I don't know, they should find a different way to do this. It's against the law. It's like, it's just, that's fucking stupid. That's so stupid. White chatter, save me. <laughs> also, hi, Jenna. I stand my queen. <laughs> Jenna, thank you. Thanks, Miss Jenna. Miss Yenna. Can I see this cat? He vibing. Vote harder, smile. <laughs> Let me, hmm, do I vote for this guy that's pro-slavery or do I vote for this guy that's pro-slavery? So hard to decide. <laughs> like, that's so, it's just, it's just, it's moronic. You're saying they're not allowed to do any of these things because all of these things are illegal. And when we ask you what they should do, you suggest that they vote. There's no voting that's going to fix this problem. Like, we tried that. <laughs> like, do you have a solution that will actually work? Like, anything, any actual solution that will work. You can't tell people they can't do something to fight injustice and then give them no alternative way to fight that injustice. Because when you do that, all you're saying is, I'm pro this injustice continuing. You can hide behind the law as much as you want, but in reality, what you're saying is, I don't like you trying to do this to fight against injustice. Stop making my life inconvenient, which is unbelievably selfish. It's unbelievably selfish. And that, uh, and, and in that circumstance, if they truly cared about that, they could have used the police to protect the encampment rather than... Um, well, that's clearly not the real reason. Yeah. Yeah. Well, th that's the point. That's what I mean. They, they, it, and if that's not the reason, and that's just simply the seasoning that they're adding on to the conversation, then there's one real reason why they're doing it. And that is because they just want the students to shut the fuck up and go away. Get the fuck out of there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and, and I, I, think I, is, I think that's, it's a bad thing. It, it definitely is a bad thing. But at the same time, I also think it's a bad thing for a bunch of people to just go camp out at the university for, you know, multiple days at a time. I, and I, I think that's not unreasonable. I, I don't think that I'm being unreasonable with this, but I also I think that there's a bad becoming... thing. I don't think it's a bad thing because there's yeah, no, no there's no other there's no other options at that point for people to to actually um, make a fuss, kind of. You know what I mean? In the most peaceful ways possible. That's precisely what the students are doing because there's no other option there. Do you see what I'm saying? Like there's there's legitimately well, there no is, other option. Just like there was no other option well, in the. Like they, but they then, don't but have then to there's go another to... school. You go to another school. That school also has the same restrictions. That school also has the yeah. same uh, issues, right? And ultimately, you arrive at like there's no school that doesn't have this uh, uh, this problem. And um, beyond that, I don't think people should have to leave their schools anyway. I think that the right thing to do in this circumstance is to make demands and to see if enough people get on board with your cause. And if enough people do get on board with your cause, even if there is violent resistance, I, to... I just. What's the quote? You know, Asman's ass was camping out for World of Warcraft expansion release and was blocking the sidewalk. <laughs> Y'all remember when GameStop was a thing? I'm not talking about the to the moon, okay? <laughs> uh, I'm talking about when you had to go to GameStop and wait in line for a physical copy of a game, okay? That's what I'm talking about, all right? I remember that shit, man. <laughs> I remember. I fucking remember, dude. Back in my day. Uh... God. <laughs> I worked at GameStop several years. I had to work several midnight releases. Fuck midnight releases and fuck GameStop. You know what I'm cons what I I can't believe? I can't believe that there hasn't been some like merger between Steam and GameStop by now. The entitlement and the privilege is insane. I mean, it's, it's, it is privilege. It's a very selfish, entitled privilege stance to have. Like, you're inconveniencing other people by fighting for what's right. It, it, like, that's pathetic. It's, it's...
please no. Valve isn't like that. Valve isn't fucked like that. <laughs> That's true. That is true. Seam isn't a public company. Seam is the closest thing we have to another massive to a massive worker co-op. That's a good point, actually. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, do you have to have a does it specifically have to be a public company to have a merger? I guess it might have to be because there's still like an um uh what is it? Is Steam an LLC or what are they? How old are you? 24? We're like 10 when that stopped. Ain't no way my parents let me do that shit. Hey, I was able to, okay? I was able to. I wasn't able to do it by myself, but I was able to convince my family to get on board with that shit, okay? By doing a lot of chores. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, you can do private acquisitions. I don't think the companies need to be public. Um, you know, Microsoft wants Valve so bad. Oh my God. Yeah. Microsoft is like, oh, we just want to destroy everything we touch. Please give us, give us Valve. <laughs> Please. Anyways. Release force. Ultimately, this Valve would have to buy all 100% of GameStop stocks. That should be like $5. So I don't think it'll be a problem. <laughs> done, done, done. Last one. Okay. <laughs> Gabe the goat. <laughs> we should capitulate to the demands that you're making. We have power in numbers. And that's ultimately how democracy does work oh. and should work. But beyond that, laws in this circumstance, as I tried to detail earlier, are just, uh, they're, they're used as, as, a, as a legal justification for the actual reason, which you and I both agree on, which is not necessarily, um, it's not necessarily the encampments in, in the space that they occupy, well, the but rather what the students are saying. Oh yeah, I mean, the campus has has the right to do that though. And I think that if you don't follow the laws, then nobody has any sort of benchmark or frame of reference to how to make any decision. Uh, you just have people that are making decisions for you know the ends justify the means. And that I is- I also, can I just say, I also did not expect, um, You know the the saying that like you're you're gonna witness in your lifetime you'll see the people who would have defended slavery. You will see them like you will witness them. I didn't realize they would make it so obvious. I guess like I don't know how else to explain the point that I'm trying to make. Like I didn't expect it to be so blatantly. No, you have to follow the law. I expected just a little bit more like Wormen, like a little bit more like, uh, yeah, of course that what they're doing is good, but like they have to follow the law. The statement is like what you are doing now is what you would be doing during every historical movement. Yeah, that's my part. That's the thing that I'm, how I don't know. I don't know how people can be on the fence when it comes to fucking genocide. That's what I'm saying. Like that. that's what I'm saying. I'm just like, I don't, I didn't expect them to make it so easy to find them. Like, I expected them to be a little bit more uh, dog whistly about it, I guess. Seems pretty straightforward. Seems pretty simple. But I don't know. Ah, uh, I don't know. I, I think, again, chaos. I, I, I understand what you're saying, and I think that's fair. I mean, and it, it, I'm sure it's frustrating, but I also think that at the same time, there should never be a situation where a bunch of people get together and they force a group of people to do something in a way that's non-democratic. Because yeah. it, it's really like... This, this was at the heart of the civil rights movement, though. Like, you, like, you know, Rose, Rose Parks uh, refusing to sit at the back of the bus, um, you know, student protests. Uh, and, oh and... no, he should have needled him on this. Maybe it would be bullying and like um not good good sportsmanship, but he should have needled him on this and said, Well, do you think Rosa Park should have followed the law? Oh man, fuck <laughs> it's okay. I, I'm being, so curious what he would say to that. Uh sittings being enforced in uh or or uh, the bus, the Montgomery bus boycott, like these are all disruptive acts of civil disobedience that were met with violent uh, police brutality at the end of it. Like, I don't think you have this opinion. You share this opinion on the civil rights movement, I suspect, right? Well, it's a, it's a much different situation. I mean, of course it's different. <laughs> I'm going to, uh, I'm going, 
I'm going. I am going. I'm going. I'm gone. I've left now. I'm gone. Incredible. Just fucking amazing. Just so cool. So incredible. What if there was someone on that bus that needed to go to the hospital right now? What if there was someone on that bus that Rosa Parks stopped, that inconvenienced someone, and then they got fired because they couldn't show up to work in time, huh? What about that? What about that, huh? 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 <laughs> oh my God. It's just so stupid. It's just so dumb. Uh, I, uh, I still don't think it's malicious intent on the case of asthma. And I, it's just a giant wall of ignorance. Dude is empathetic in all ways, uh, except the law and the order point. Yeah, no, I, I, like I said before, again, um, I will proudly say that, like, I disagree with a lot of stuff, Asmongold says. But I don't think he's a malicious actor. I don't think he does things to be an asshole. I don't think he knows. About, I, don't, I mean, how many times in this conversation alone did he say, wow, I didn't know that? He just speaks with the confidence of, of a, sorry, of a white dude who has an audience and a platform that tells him he's right all the time. That's what happens when you have that privilege and then you get an audience. That's just what happens. That's why there's so many, <laughs> that's why there, there were and still are so many people in Hollywood, like either directors or writers or, well, I guess not the writers, any big time writers. Um, or producers, or even musicians, or comedians. There, that, there's a reason why all those people do sexual assault. It's because they think that they can get away with it. And they think that their audience will love them no matter what. They just don't think, like, they just haven't had to deal with consequences that many times in their life. And so it, it builds this, um, what would you call it? I don't know, barrier from the real world, I guess, if that makes sense. I mean, just think about this. Think about this. When I say privilege, you have to understand, I'm talking about your life is easier in ways you don't notice. That's what I mean when I say privilege, okay? So I have able-bodied privilege because when I go somewhere, I don't have to worry about there being ramps. I don't have to worry about elevators being accessible. I don't have to worry about that. I just know I need to get from place A to place B, and that's it. It's simple. My life is made easier in ways I don't because I take it for granted. And that's what I'm saying. When you're driving and you sp you're speeding and you're white and a cop stops you, you don't immediately get concerned, although some people do and you would kind of be valid to, you don't immediately get concerned that you're going to get shot. Guess what? There's a lot of Black Americans that do have to worry about that, that, that can't just respond casually, that have to sit up straight and have their hands on the wheel just to make sure that like the cop doesn't think that they're reaching for anything. And you just don't see that. That's what privilege is about. As a woman, I'm concerned a cop would sexually assault me as you kind of should be considering that they have really bad rates of sexual assault. I mean, cops, 40%, look it up. <laughs> Not good. Self-reported sexual assault of their domestic violence of their spouses. <laughs> so, so yeah. When you get stopped in a suburb as a white male, you just worry about being inconvenienced and like the fine. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, and I think it's the same thing. It's just like you just go, you live your life and yeah, you experience hardship and all that other stuff. All right. But there's so many things that you don't see that make your life easier for you. Add with that... An enormous fan base that strokes your ego day in and day out. And you're going to speak with confidence on things. That's just a recipe for kind of disaster, right? No, American cops suck. American cops are so dog shit. They're so dog shit. Like, oh my God. Racists will point to any Middle Eastern country and go, look at how unsafe women are. Like, bro, have you been to America? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Fucking, dude, fucking true. Fucking true. But this is also, can I just say one other thing on this topic that's a little bit tangential? It's also my opinion why there is such a gender divide, I feel like, in modern U.S. There's a lot of reasons contributing to it, of course, but there's a, this is one of many reasons of why I believe that there's a big gender divide, which is you don't see the privilege you experience. You only see the privilege other people experience. And so... Um, 
there is such a thing as female privilege, just like there is such a thing as male privilege. Both of those things can exist in the same universe, actually. Like, female privilege is not being as worried that a cop will kill you. Like, you can see the fucking live leak footage. Men just get killed by the cops more often, even when they're doing the exact same things as women. <laughs> like, literally, it just, w women are just not seen as a threat. So they don't get shot as often or killed as often by the cops. But guess what? You know what male privilege is? You don't have to worry about the cop raping you. <laughs> like, I, you don't have to worry about that. Like, that's just not something that crosses your mind. So that th there's like, you can, exp you'll experience your privilege and not see what you're experiencing, but you'll only see what the other person experiences. So even small things like things that I take for granted, like people not viewing me as threatening, right? Like I'm five, five. I'm not <laughs> large in stature. I'm not very threatening or scary looking. I don't have any tattoos or cool piercings. I am not a scary looking person. And so I feel very comfortable approaching random people because I know I like I've never thought about, oh my God, I'm I'm a scary, I'm a scary looking person. Meanwhile, meanwhile. <laughs> but you have 30K. <laughs> I have to repeat myself again on the 30K thing really quick. To the person in Reddit who said, there's no way that bitch has 30K. That's how I know this is a joke. <laughs> You're, I'm, I'm still thinking about your comment, man. I'm still thinking about it because it was so true. <laughs> and you should say it, okay? <laughs> you should fucking say it louder. <laughs> Anyways, rent free for real. Um... But that's something I take for granted. Like, I, that's a privilege that I have that I don't have to worry about, right? Um, whereas there's a lot of scary looking dudes that I'm friends with that are really tall. Maybe they're larger in stature. Maybe they're bald. Everybody knows you can never know what's inside of a bald man's head. Very scary. Maybe they're tatted. And you have to worry that you are not coming off threatening. Like, I know men who recognize, oh my God, I've been fo accidentally following this woman. <laughs> for like three blocks. I don't want her to think I'm following her. So I'm going to walk into this store or like stop. So there's more distance between us. So she doesn't feel like I'm stalking her and getting terrified at me stalking her. Okay. <laughs> okay. I think we've made enough distance. I can keep walking now. I don't want to terrify people just by existing Christ. I do that. Yeah. Yeah. I've never thought about doing that before ever. It has never been the case for me that I've actively been like, Oh, I've been walking in the same direction as someone else. I, 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 can't, I can't let them think this. I don't want to be scary to them. I don't want them to be afraid of me. Because there, there's no one that's fucking afraid of me. <laughs> Only people that are afraid of me are incels, but that's just because they're afraid of women. <laughs> like, they're like, they see one, they're like, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, AI is going to replace you. <laughs> I'll, I'll have you know. It's like, okay, dude, all right. Boo. Ah! <laughs> Jump scare. <laughs> anyways, anyways. Um, yeah, that was kind of a tangential point I wanted to go on that like, yeah, there's a privilege. Yeah, you have some privilege. And when you're not aware of your privileges and you have a relatively sheltered life, it's easy to have assumptions about things and think you should just follow the law, especially because in my experience, it's generally speaking that only minorities are very, like, not only minorities, that's an incorrect statement. It's generally my experience that m more often than not, minorities that I meet tend to be very, like, about the law. And they're like, yeah, the legal system is really perfect. But the majority <laughs> of people that are benefited by the law tend to think that the law is always good. <laughs> that's, there's always, you know... <laughs> Which, anyways, anyways, uh, let's watch a little bit more. I want to know, I want to see if they, there's anything else interesting that g goes on here. I mean, like one of them, you're protesting against a government and the other one you're protesting against a university. A university isn't a government. Okay, well, and, state and universities, I, I well, they did, they well, did protest against universities as well <laughs> during the well, civil yeah. rights movement. So the, sure. the, 
what I'm saying is that I think that if you're talking about the actual, uh, what do you call it? If you're talking about actual laws, then yeah, people, if they want to protest, the best way to protest is to fucking vote. Like that's what needs to happen. Like, I, I don't think that you can rely on just getting a bunch no. of people together and oh, then okay. hopefully the government is going oh, to do what you want. No. Because also like, just because there's no. a lot of people protesting doesn't always mean that that means that that's what the majority no. of the people want. Guy, because the majority, the majority of the people, people did not, not want. He's going to say psych right now. He's going to say, I was just kidding right now, right now. He's going to say it. Um, you know, the, any kind of <laughs> desegregation in general. It depends probably on where, but I, I think that in some cases you're probably right. You know, where no, they, guys, he's going to say it. He's going to say, I'm just kidding. Wait. That's like March, though, you know, like, in the South, Black yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. You're right about that. So that was and like, the, that was the minority in that circumstance and allies of uh, the black community demonstrating uh, unlawfully like they were they were breaking the law. They were specifically going to segregated institutions, whether it be universities or whether it be restaurants, private establishments and uh, and, and demonstrating in the show of force to say that these are unlawful. These are these are unjust laws that are in place and these are unjust practices uh, that what are in place say? that are turned uh, that the government turns a blind eye to and that that needs to change and in that well, instance the just like the these government. students like they were there were plenty of different mechanisms of the state that no it wasn't just the government i'm saying like private institutions were the ones who are enforcing segregation okay. um on their own on their own volition okay. the reason why we have the uh the reason why we have uh specific rights that that actually interfere in the way that private businesses conduct their affairs on the boundaries of exclusion for certain races We're and even gender. <laughs> I love this absolute juggernaut of an intellectual. This guy probably has got like a nice pipe, a nice tobacco pipe, maybe a monocle. Demolished, fanning the flames, I see. <laughs> Just excellent, 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 excellent. Love the cosplay. Uh, plus one RP. Okay. Yeah. yeah, discrimination is specifically because, and this was the segregationist argument at the time, which was just let the businesses do whatever they want. I'm sure that people will take their dollars elsewhere, but it didn't work that way. Plenty of people actually genuinely loved the idea that they were white-only institutions. White people had more capital than black people, especially in the South. And therefore, all of these businesses, if it wasn't for the federal government, inevitably due to a tremendous amount of protest and a tremendous amount of resistance and a lot of state violence uh, that that uh, tried to squash this uh, democratic resistance. Um, if it wasn't for all of that, then, you know, we would still not have any uh, laws that interfere in the affairs of private businesses. And, I just want to hear his and, response and, to this. Uh, and, and refuse them uh, to, no, and I, refuse I, to I allow them to saying. discriminate. Yeah, no, I, I see what you're saying, definitely. Uh, I, I think if you're talking about the protests that are happening now, I do think that is different than the civil rights movement. It, it, it's certainly different. And whenever you're talking about the civil rights movement also, like I, I, I don't know if we can really apply something that happened 60 years ago to something that's happening right now or 50 years ago. Uh, it's very hard for me to say. I think in some cases you're probably right, in some cases maybe not so what do, much. What do you mean by it's different? Uh, it's different because the entire culture is different. The way that people are making decisions is different. The way that people can vote is different. Uh, there are all of these ways that are different. I mean, so yeah, black people were not, you know, they, they couldn't really vote. I mean, I guess it's not that different now because there's many different ways of legally restricting black people from voting. Um, but, but that's, that's more complex, but ultimately the methods were unlawful. The, is he wrong was, though? Yes. <laughs> yes. He is very wrong. Actually. Yes. Here, let's go back to the lists of why it's different. I mean, so yeah, black people were not, you know, our culture is different. The way that people so what, much what do you mean? years ago, uh, it's very hard for me to say. I think in some cases you're probably right. In some cases, maybe not so what, much. What do you mean by it's different? Uh, it's different because the entire culture is different. The way that people are making decisions is different. The way that people can vote is different. Culture decisions and how we can vote. So let's go backwards here. How we can vote. There was no candidate that you could just vote for. There was no candidate that was running on freeing the slaves. There was no candidate that was running on that without there having been dissent before then, or like rather not, not slaves, uh, uh, segregation. There was no candidate that decided for no reason to be like, we need to end segregation. That's not what happened. People rioted and then someone said, okay, okay, okay. I'm, I actually love not segregating people, actually. 
That's what happened the other way around. Okay. And this is how it's been historically forever. People complain and then a candidate decides, fuck, I need to say something. I, I need to take a stance because people are changing their mind about this. That is what happened. Don't mind the women vote. That's way too far. Yeah. <laughs> um, second of all, and, and actually women voting is another good example. It's like what, what candidate was running prior to um, um, the suffrage movement? What candidate was running that just wanted to give women rights? There wasn't a candidate. There was no candidate that already, without any fight, was like, I'm willing to do this. I will be brave. You know, I didn't notice how fat your boobies are. <laughs> like, that did not happen. That did not. No, no, that's not what happened. People fought and the fighting is what caused someone to take a stance and be like, I just want the fighting to end. Let's just give these people what they want. OK, so voting is not su substantially changed. At the end of the day, there are two candidates that are, have a reasonable chance of winning. Uh, women should be able to vote. I'm 6'4", by the way. <laughs> um, sorry, what was I saying? That's a very important point. Yes, S substantially has not changed in an in a, uh, uh, important way. We don't have ranked choice voting. We're still the same, basically the same two-party system. You have two people. And Has anyone wondered why the anti-abortion stuff is mainly run by men? It's kind of illogical. What are you talking about? Men like to have sex. Men be having sex. Men be getting women pregnant. Men be not wanting kids. Seems straightforward to me, personally. I feel like if I was a man and I was having sex, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It seems pretty simple. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so what was the other thing? Our culture has changed? What the fuck does that mean? Like our culture is different? <laughs> How does our, in what way is our culture so different that people used to be able to protest violently and now they can't? Like, like what is so different that has, that has significantly changed and how has it changed it? How has anything been changed because of it? Like that's not, you have to do more than that. You actually have to connect those points, right? Our culture has become woke. <laughs> yeah, that's silly. It's fucking silly. There's nothing. I don't know about this one. And then, and then there was the other one was how people do things has changed, which is not true. That's not even true. Not even remotely true. Black people from voting. Um, but the point I was trying to arrive at here is that the methods were unlawful. They were seen as unlawful. They were seen as um, they were met with a lot of police uh, resistance. And ultimately, that police resistance led to a shit ton of violence. And people were talking about the chaos in the exact same terms. Culture has changed because there's basically no more violence anymore nowadays. Okay, well, let's say, let's just run with that for two seconds. How does that impact what protesting is allowed to be? Our culture has become cancel culture, just like denim promotes it. <laughs> it's freedom of speech, just biased opinions and personal insults against people who happen to have different views to things. It's different views of things, by the way. Um, what does that have anything to do with protesting? How does that connect to protesting? Why was it that people could could protest to get women rights to vote, but people can't protest now? because of cancel culture what like what i what you have to tie the two ideas together the exact same boundaries as they do right now uh with respect to the palestinian pro-palestinian encampments um but but ultimately these students are following on the footsteps of those who who fought bravely for civil rights and fought bravely against two different things we changed the subject already don't worry that's you're you look like such an idiot but it's okay it's okay buddy it's okay it's all good. <laughs> it's the Vietnam War. In some instances, occupying the exact same spaces. 
Oh, I mean, like, and I understand that. I have, I have no problem with them doing that, but I do have a problem doing it whenever it's destroying property and taking away other people's education. But they, and I, and I but they said that about the civil rights movement as well, is what I mean. Like, they, ultimately, I think they, I'm glad that they had a, the ends justify the means uh, attitude during the civil rights movement. And uh, I, they, I wish he asked, I wish, I wish Hassan would ask him, um, I need to make a change.org petition to debate Asmund Gold. We need to get 50,000 signatures for sure. And then someone needs to put a bounty on my head. But more importantly, I wish you would ask him why he's so obsessed with the idea of the legal system and why people need to follow the law. Like, why? Why, why do you care so much about the legal system? Why? I'm glad that they had an ends justify brain. the means attitude during True. the Vietnam War protests or uh, during the boycott. Peasant protests. brain is so strong in the U.S., dude. It's really bad. I think those topics against... are way more com complex than that. Well, uh, BDS, I don't think... is, BDS is identical. It's the same exact. It's literally like almost definitionally identical. It's a boycott, divestment and sanctions on apartheid South Africa uh, in 1985. This was a, also another student-led movement as well. And the methods were identical too. The only difference is uh, South Africa did not have uh, the, the benefit of having another South Africa that they could learn because the mistakes from and, and uh, make sure that, that they don't repeat it. Israel had South Africa. Smiley face. We're going to look to so they could like set up a lobbying effort um, and, and, and ensure that the state uh, bends to their will as to the best of their ability and the media apparatus as well. Yeah, I mean, I, definitely Israel is much more influential than that. I mean, I, I can see where you're coming from. I, I think that the I think that that type of mindset is very scary to me because while you're right that it does create a lot of positive outcomes, it also creates a lot of negative outcomes as well. Do you have examples and, of the negative outcomes? Like as far as a democratically organized revolutionary movement? What do you mean by that? Like, is like there, the negative out, like, well, I'm just saying. Like, like, is, there, you, is there an example that you can give me throughout history where people organized on certain boundaries that were like democratically organized on certain boundaries and they like enforce the tyranny of majority and like something awful happened as a consequence of that? I'm sure I could think of some. I mean, absolutely. And I think it happens all the time on a very basic level. Like, uh, for example, like during the BLM riots, people were obviously burning down buildings and doing things like that. That's something I, I don't really support. And I don't think that that's beneficial. And I, I'm, I'm never going to support that. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's not helping anybody. It's not doing anything for anyone. Uh, it's purely destructive. And I don't think that people have a right to do that. Uh, I, I think that, yeah, you, you should have the right to protest. But if you use the justification for the ends justify the means, so the, then I think that anybody I think can... the, the the immediate problem. So this is what I mean when I say that, like anyone can talk about politics. You just have to have a good foundation. And, and this is my opinion. This is the problem, I think, right, where his assumption immediately is that people are just doing this thing that's disruptive for no reason. People do not organize in the tens of thousands or in some instances, in some of the protests, hundreds of thousands for no reason. That's just not how people work. Like if you were to pretend like this was a market, like we'll go full economics and this is a market. People don't buy a good for no reason. People don't protest for no reason. People don't do that shit for no reason. People do not go and live in a tent for a week unless you're white and you love to camp for no reason. Like, I think if you're immediately starting from the position of my political enemy does things for seemingly no reason, no shit they're always going to look like they're not justified in doing it. But that's not what they're doing.